When I am saved, I have secured my ticket to heaven. Sacredness is when you are set apart. God loves you so much that he has to kill anything of you. And it is a matter of having clarity on matters that affect us as the youth. Having clarity in the spiritual aspect. I have a panel who are going to help us try and establish everything. Everything I'm talking about, every angle that you need to understand. With me, we have the panel and we also have people in this church. These are the youth of this church and also the youth from this town who have gathered in this place to have this open forum. So in one moment, I'll just like us to celebrate everybody who's watching us online. Kindly, let's just celebrate everybody who's watching us online. Thank you very much for staying tuned. And thank you. Please stay tuned till the end. Remember, you can ask us questions. You can ask for clarity. And you can ask anything. It is an open forum. And right about now, I'd like to start with the introductory part. I'd like to introduce my panel. I'll start from the far right. Kindly introduce yourself. All right, good afternoon. My name is Pancras. I am a pastor, a senior pastor of a church called Word of Light Center, and I'm excited to be a part of this forum. God bless you all. Hi, everyone. My name is Ruth Gerona, and I'm excited to be here. And uh, it is okay not to be okay, and you owe no one perfection. So let's all accept the situation we are so that we may get healed and begin a new life from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am Brandon Okosumi. I'll be the moderator of the day. So uh, straight to the main agenda of the day, we have questions. We have questions. We need clarity. We have questions. We need to be answered. So uh, there is a microphone that will be moving around. So if you're courageous enough, I'll not tell you that uh, Ulizia Jirani. If you're courageous enough, you can just shoot up your hands and we start right away. Any question? Or you want the groundbreaker? You want the groundbreaker so that we can proceed from there? Okay. So who can break the ground then? Basically, uh, I'll pick from where we stopped uh, Somebody has already shot up the hand. Thank you very much. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, my name is Titus Akinyi. Man, uh, just when we were back at the town there, Reverend uh, talked of something during the evening. But, uh, we tuli kwa maombi lakini hakushikilia vizuri alisema kuwa if you are married to two wives anaomba kuwa utoe yule and marriage is a covenant that is sealed by blood so mimi swali yangu kwake utaivunja aje na ni ile maagano yenye Mungu ndiye aliweka sasa asante thank you very much pastor you might address that at one time, Jesus was asked a question. And the question he was asked, the answer that he gave, he said it was not so in the beginning. What he was basically trying to do was to explain the original context of marriage. That marriage was between one man and one woman. Which means all we have been having in the name of like, for example, having a second wife, a third wife, those were what we call the traditions of men. So the traditions of men make no sense when you come to the Lord. When you come to the Lord, you enter into another culture and another tradition, which basically calls you into a lifestyle of obedience. So remember, originally, as it were from Scripture, if God ordained it that way, that it is one man and one woman, then we follow after that pattern. All right? In my own, 
view, most of times whenever you hear uh, that a family has a second or a third wife, there are elements like witchcraft, high levels of division that you will see manifest in commonality. I remember I used to do a radio program back in uh, Fish FM, and uh, at one time I actually addressed that matter. Two ladies communicated, one of them from Kakamega, and told me openly that it is true. She was actually like the second wife, and she would be honest enough to tell me that any time that man would come, the only thing that the man would come to do was simply to have sex. And uh, honestly speaking, any person that is a second wife or a third wife, you must know that the core reason behind your existence isn't fundamentally marriage. It has everything to do with the lust that exists in that man. I hope I'm making sense. Even for the woman themselves, the woman herself knows that she will use sex to capture the man. So the foundation behind it has nothing to do with what we call marriage in view of setting up a family. So that's why my argument is very clear because I've had such a case. And I'll tell a person, even biblically, according to the laws of the spirit, the laws of spirit only recognize the one that is called your wife as the first one. So the other ones, legally, they are not. By the way, I'm sorry I'm taking a bit longer, but just allow me to say this. Did you even know that biblically, if a woman decides to pray against another person, intruding against her marriage, do you know that it's even possible that that person can die? Are you aware of that? The Bible says, two should, I mean, let not man put asunder what God has done, what? Have you ever read that scripture? So that means if a person can decide to stand legally and begin to stand on that scripture in the world of the spirit, God can set an attack on the individual that is interfering coming in because they are actually a strange being. So that would actually be my comment on that. It's good to see mom. Mom, we acknowledge you. God bless you so much. So much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I believe you've been answered graciously. The next question. We move to the next question very fast. We move to the next question very fast. Okay, you can also write down your questions. I, will, uh, I, I believe most of us are bold. Some of us fear Kidogo, so you can write the questions down and still submit them. But I believe once you pop it up, you will say it as it is. Pastor, um, in the previous conversation, we were talking about um, the aspect of um, the Nazist situation. And uh, I believe we, we finished it conclusively by the understanding that this is a person who is acting otherwise. And uh, uh, after that, we had some conversations and uh, people were asking, can you go down and break it down effectively to the aspect that is this aspect of a narcissist a man or a person? Because the, a man or a person, because people are like, okay, is it only men who are narcissists? So that was the question that popped up. So it is the aspect of, the, the, it's not that it is not clear, but they now want the breakdown. Because now it was like, this is a target on men, and the women are like, Nihondo Omeku affected more. So it is the aspect of, is it a man, a narcissist, or is it a person who is a narcissist? Uh, one, I think I will also want Ruth to contribute on that. Part of the reason being a professional view. Uh, secondly, um, one of the qualities of a narcissist is the aspect of being a control freak. And I think if you were to think of it that way, you then cannot really bind it on the male factor because there are women who are extremely controlling. Uh, so uh, I think that's what I can say. So we do not say that narcissists are only, uh, it's only bound around the masculine aspect. I do believe that there are women who are also narcissists, particularly in our current setting, that is a very common phenomena. So maybe just to expound more, I think I would want Ruth's professional view. Okay, who is a narcissist? He has answered it profoundly, a controlling person. Now, um, it is not about a man, it's not about an older, old person or a young person. It is a personality that develops, it is a character trait that develop from, from step to step. There are these people who are born naturally narcissist. And there are people who develop gradually because of the prevailing conditions as they grow up. 
Maybe someone may, 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 may be a good person until he enters an institution where you have to work under pressure. This person will develop muscles which he call a defensive mechanism. And because they don't know, they don't know how to manage the pressure, they don't, there's something we call emotional intelligence. So if you're not able to master your emotions, the, the other person will master you. The other person, the, the personality next to you will master your personality. So number one, I would advise before you, we, we narrow down to who is a narcissist, I want to, to come to narrow to you yourself. I want to talk to me as I talk to you. Who are you? Do you know who you are? Are you able to identify your weaknesses? Are you able to know your strengths? And how do you manage, emotion, uh, do you manage people around you? If you can answer that question, you are able now to move on to how to, uh, on how to handle the, the, the next person next to you, okay? In church, we meet people. We have to work as a team. Now, how will you work as a team if yourself, you are not a team player? So it, it, it first begins with you, okay? So I want us, let's, let us not point a finger to this person. I want, I want us to point a finger to myself. Am I a good person? Am I a better person? Okay? If you are a better person, you are able to, to master a weakness in your, neighbor's, uh, in your neighbor's emotions. Okay? We say this is all about emotional management. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a question from the crowd? Yes, we have a question here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Douglas. Um, my question goes to Pastor Pancras. Um, assuming you are my father and um, he, uh, I'm your son, um, I found this cute chick, a good one. Um, we have engaged my father, my spiritual dad knows. Now, it's now my time to come and introduce her to you as my father. That this is the girl that I'm getting married to. Lakini shida inatokea wakati baba kama mzazi and hataki kuona msichana kutoka language jingine. Anataka kuona msichana wa language yangu. How do I handle that? How will I break from that? Because that is a shock already. Thank you. Well, that's a good question. We could clap for him. He has done well. <laughs> One of the challenges we have is, for example, intertribal marriages. They are usually a bit of a challenge by the time you're considering to go and tell your parents. Uh, and it does happen that there are parents who are stereotyped. They are completely set on a certain course and they wouldn't want you to marry uh, from a different tribe. Uh, I can only give three answers for that. Number one, uh, the first way to influence such a group of people is not by them first. Start with yourself and the person you're actually considering to marry, establish the conviction and the fact that the two of you are meant for each other and you're serious about it. You could also use the existing environment that talks of the counselors around you, your spiritual parents and people around you to also help to strengthen uh, the conviction of your marriage. Parents buy into what you believe, even if they can fight it, as long as they can see how much you love the other individual and you believe in what you're about to go into, that's what they will buy into. It's, it's a principle in life that if you don't stand for anything, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. So the moment you have a stand, of a relationship then you have the power to influence so that's the first thing so even before you would think about talking to them uh, as long as you first of all started in terms of an environment you know like for example one of the structures since we are a church if any one of you who is young here is thinking of getting into a relationship let me just give you some few principles number one even before you do it get somebody that you can subscribe uh, your, your decision to or your thoughts to 
Have somebody like a counselor, a mentor, or somebody you can talk to about the thoughts you're about to make. There are, there are three destiny decisions. Okay? Purpose is a destiny decision or the career you will pursue. So you should never go wrong in that area. Are you hearing me? Salvation is a career decision because you will spend eternity somewhere. Marriage is a destiny decision. That's why you should never go wrong in that area. The main cause of poverty in America is divorce. The core cause of rebellion in America is family dysfunctions. So if there's an area that people should never go wrong, it is marriage. And apparently, that's an area many people are challenged. And because, by the way, one of the things we will discuss has to do with depression uh, because of the current existing uh, what we call factors, then it means that it is very important for you to have a lot of intelligence that basically comes around you. So that means counsel. So one key factor when you're talking about dealing of, I mean, in terms of you moving into a relationship, have somebody you can talk to about the decision you're about to make because they will help to shape the decision. They cannot make the decision for you, but they will help you to make the decision in a better way. Okay? I hope I'm making sense. So that's why I began by saying that it is critical that one, you establish the conviction personally. Number two, if you notice that they are already set, their minds are set in a certain way, in every family setup, let's make an assumption that both parents are there. Let's not even talk about a single parenting family. Let's first talk about the two of them being there. Amongst the two, there's always one that is a doorway to the other one. That means there's a one that is staunch and there's the other one that is open to reason. So use the one that is open to reason to penetrate to the one that is not. In most families, you'll find that the fathers are very tough, but the mothers are actually quick to listen. So start with the one that is quick to listen and use their influence to go ahead. You know, by the way, when we were mentioning this thing about uh, uh, Nini, uh, narcissist. By the way, that's why I said women are. I remember Jezebel. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Shy, yeah? So, but anyway, what I was trying to bring about was that there's always somebody within that setting that you can use as a doorway of influence. So look for that person. If you are in a single setting family, there's always either an uncle or an auntie. Get either one of them to talk to your parent. Number three, give your parents time. If you've already informed them and they seem to be very tough, give them time. Don't push them. Give them room so that they can be able to adjust because their mindsets were that they had a certain quality of belief, then you have to give them room to adjust to what you believe in. Now, that giving them room might be a bit of time, but also giving them room is also enabling them to at least understand what you're trying to convince them. If within that time they will not have bought into what you are saying, then it is now easier for you to make decisions using your spiritual parents and you can progress from there. I hope I've made sense. Yeah, because then you're protected. Then it means you've used all avenues. Then it means you've been patient enough. If you will make any further decision, your parents cannot blame you because they will now know that you did everything possible. And then you now trust God to vindicate you. That's my simple answer. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, maybe. Maybe just to add uh, where yeah, Pastor has left. Also, we need to know that uh, we are not always right. <laughs> yes. If our parents so we always need to also to look both sides. Mm -hmm. Like, why are, men, why, why are they being rigid? Why are they buying your idea? Like, mm -hmm. when you get that, you'll be able now to know how to go about now looking yeah. for someone to talk to. But if we just be like, if I brought a certain tribe my parents will not accept, and you go ahead and do that, you realize that you'll miss something. Mm -hmm. So let us also be sure that as we're going about that, we have the right, uh, we have like made up our mind in a right way. So that Ukienda, Wambium Zesan, in Papa Mugu, I'm a chick. Yeah, so I've noticed the chick. So then the parent is like, this one, you see, try to know why. That's the thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Do we have a question from the audience? Thank you. If you've written your questions, you can hand them over to Juni. Uh, our online viewers, you can as well put your questions on the question and answer tab. We shall be tackling them. So to Pastor Pancras, yeah. how, long does, uh, how long should courtship take before a couple marries? Uh, I think no, it's not a couple, eh? before someone marries. Eh? Yeah. 
And then uh, how can someone know that the man you are dating is the one God has chosen for you? And then the, the other one is do spirit house spouses exist? Okay. I'll start with the first one. Uh, psychologists usually argue that it takes about two years to know a person. So that's what they usually say. But I do believe that uh, there are phases in relationships. There is what we call the lover's phase. There is a friendship phase. And there are other different phases. My take would be that in as much as two years is what would uh, be made known, that that is what would be good for you to get to know a person. I do think it is sincerity that usually helps. When I actually started dating my wife, the first thing that my spiritual father told me, he told me, do not sow a seed of pretense. And that was a gift. In other words, be honest from the very beginning, have nothing to hide, because if you can do so, then you will quickly know uh, the person that you're actually dating. So to me, there's no exact timeline, because there are also other factors. For example, another factor that also affects uh, how long you date is something we consider sexual power. You know, in the Bible, it says, if a man has a maiden and he's burning. Have you ever read that scripture? It says he's burning. My, so my scripture, now to me, at the term burn. It doesn't say lust. It says burn. So there's a difference between lust and burn. Lust is an urge you want to release. Burning is not so. Burning is sexual power. Every human being has different sexual abilities. There are people, for example, who can get into a relationship and uh, openly you can tell these ones cannot go beyond six months. And it's not because they, has, they, 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 are, they are what? They, are, they have lustful issue. No, it's just because their sexual ability doesn't permit them to go beyond that. If they go beyond six months, it akwa maombingi ne tutanza kwa ombea. But I saw if you, yeah, tutanza kufanya repentance na vitu kama yu. Kuna story litolewa. Uh, it's a true story. Uh, this couple had actually gone to visit the, uh, the lady's family. And apparently because the lady's family did not have a very good place to be able to host them, they were forced to have to stay in one particular room. And the only thing that divided the room they had to pick up was like a, a cloth that divided it. It was only two weeks to the wedding. And uh, that night, as the lady was actually sleeping, you know, it was actually a week to the wedding. With all the thoughts and the dreams about how the wedding will be, the parents have now have, have, have accepted the guy. She felt something touch her at night. In her mind, she felt like, oh, this must be an angel, only to open up her eyes and see it is a brother. <laughs> with, the, with the underwear alone, and the brother and Akira, and I said, hey, Miss Yezi, you should clear tender. Miss Yezi, see to Tawana, see to Malizia, to Apa. Thank God the lady was strong enough to go ahead and actually tell the brother, we cannot do this. Let's just stand. We will make it. And you know what the lady did? The lady encouraged the brother to go out, a pig when a baridi na kaeuko, no to survive. Kwa sababu wata kati ya wanaume na wanawake, uta notice men are usually stirred up quite fast. Our sexual power is not to that extent. So there are factors like sexual power. So that's why the Bible says if any man has a maiden and he burns, let him marry. In other words, if his sexual power can't go beyond a certain timeline, then it is encouraged for the two of them to marry. There are other factors like education, depending with what they are doing as per that time. If one of them is in school, I hope I'm making sense. Um, depending with work or depending with location, all these things can also affect. But to know a person is up to you. The quicker you guys can be open to each other and be honest to each other, it opens the relationship to be far much more uh, easier to connect with each, with each other. That's my simple take. So in as much as two years is a timeline, people can take three months, people can take six months. I've even seen some couples which never even took more than three months and later they got into marriage and they are doing very well. Very, very well. Some have taken five years, and even the five years, they never even got to know each other. By the time on our one, about only stress. So it's usually up to the two. Second question, I will also ask the panel to also help me to answer the, uh, the second question. Uh, Ken is here, and I would also want the ladies' view. Uh, and please, let's also be reminded, I think the last time we had the talk show, we also said that amongst us also, uh, contribution of uh, ideas can also come like we have pasta here so we are also open now uh the second one how do i know is it is, is it so the right person okay uh there's a statement that Ruth said earlier on that begin with yourself and i made this statement also in the last talk show that we had 
There's a principle in the Bible called like begets like. If you know yourself, it is easy for you to know the type of person you want to marry. Because you can discern your patience level, you can discern your emotional level, you are aware of who you are. So if, for example, you get a person who you like, you admire and you really want to marry them, but you can tell that that person, there is something in them that will keep on ticking you off. It's easy for you just to close the door because you are self-aware. Am I making sense? Yeah, you are self-aware. The lady is beautiful. Are you understanding me? Now see Holy Ghost. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope I'm making sense. Lakini ata in as much as he's that pretty. Uki muangalia na ujiangalia na pali unaenda. Unajua hu ya fit kwa destiny yako. So it immediately helps you to block. So start with yourself. That's the first way to answer. Second way to answer is always utilize the counseling environment that is around you. There's always an existing environment that helps you to also make decisions in a better way. There are people that are friends to you that sometimes as you relate with them who are good see wale wa kuamshenye vile tulikuwa tunaongea au ni watu wanajua ku retain information wale watu kiongea nao ama ta mentors and you're telling them of the possible thoughts or decisions you're about to make they can go ahead and tell you that's a good one but pray about it number 3 being that you are Christians prayer is more critical above all the bible says that god speaks peace to his people one of the ways to know that a relationship is of God is the peace you have. I hope I'm making sense. You don't need to hear the voice of God. There's that inner peace and inner conviction that gives you confidence of the individual you're about to connect to. So that third factor, which would even be the first one, is a very critical one. As believers, learn to pray about your social uh, decisions about the type of person you want to marry. Because when you pray, you can even see it spiritually. Does this person fit into my future? So I will finish by making a statement and then I will ask the other panelists to also contribute. Please listen carefully. You never marry for now. You marry for the future. If you marry for now, it means all you're looking for is the pleasures you will gain now. If you're marrying for the future, then you will actually get to notice that you're actually getting married to a person who you will be unfolding the future with. Which means every morning when you're waking up, when you look at the person, you will always be saying, thank God I married you. Why? Because it makes sense as it relates to where you're going, not where you are. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I think Ken will pick it then, Ruth, that will conclude with it. Okay, thank you very much. On the same question about uh, how to find the right person, now how do you answer this when you are single? Oh, I'm not married. No, it's possible. I didn't say I, I'm single. So, uh, I think... Uh, there's something pastor has talked about we are not marrying for now we are marrying for the future then i'll add that uh information is power uh get some books that talk about marriage talk about relationships there is a book i read when i was in college it is called uh singles and uh dating and single by miles monroe yeah. he talks much about issues Okay, how do you find the right person? If you are married, how do you manage everything? He talks about that. So when you have that information, it also helps to know who is this person that can, we can grow together, we can uh, move together if it is about marriage or anything. So the issue is you need to have the right information. So at the end of the day, it is you or it is me as an, indivi as an individual. Do I have what it takes for a relationship? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. Thank you so much. Um, I want you to write. I want you to write the attributes and the virtues you want the kind of a man or a woman to have. If you need a honest person, if you need a, a kind, loving, you understand. Yeah. Now, after you've written all, ask yourself: Am I this? Am I what I've written? Because if you want honesty, you must, you must be honest yourself. You if you are fake, trust me, you will attract your own fake. And when you, will, you, you, are, you, you begin now work, this journey of life, then you realize you have been fake. The, the both of you have been fake all this while. And it reaches a point whereby you cannot fake it anymore. You. And you are unwrapped. You, everyone begins to unwrap the, themselves in their own mysterious way, you know. And uh, one day T.D. Jack said, 
with the weaknesses you have. You understand? Like you wake up in the morning, uh, the alarm rings, and you, you, you go back to sleep. You wake up late, you leave your bed the way it is, you run to, to work. The house, the cup, when you open the door, the cup is just right at the door. No talking of the kitchen. Will you marry you? That, those weaknesses, I'm talking about those weaknesses. The you that you leave the house the way it is. The you that you always think negatively about people. If you are given a chance to marry that you that you know, will you marry you? Thank you. <laughs> if you are to marry somebody, can you marry yourself? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yes, Pastor. There was a third question about spiritual husbands. Yes, they do ex exist. Spiritual wives, yes, they do. Three ways to answer it. The first one, part of it is bloodline oriented. Uh, there are foundational factors that can make you find out that you are married to a spiritual husband. Sometimes in some families, some people are dedicated early to a deity. And that deity always comes to have sex with them as they actually mature. In that case, after you have gotten born again, one of the things that you have to do is to quickly discover if there is a foundational problem in your life. Practice repentance. Get a spiritual authority over you to pray and to break that power. Number two, yes, it does happen depending with what you are exposed to. One of the reasons why I'm always against pornography, I was called by a man who went for a men's forum in one church. I won't mention the church. Uh, a mainstream church in this town. And he called me because in the men's forum they were actually discussing about pornography as uh, men who are married, and they were in agreement that pornography, as long as you're married, is okay. I refuse it. God punished the devil. The reason why I reject is because if you watch that constantly, then people will argue that what you're watching will trigger you because at some certain points you'll become sexually cold, so you need an excitement. There was even a pastor friend of mine, the guy who was our best couple, Pastor Benson Waura. He went to preach in a certain church back in uh, Nyahururu. And uh, he ministered so powerfully, so by the time they were now going to the house, because he was being hosted by the pastor, uh, in, the pastor has a big house, so they were hosting him in the house. And so as he arrived, the guy was like, he said, you have blessed us, you have blessed us. Hey, let me even put something for you here. Uh, you watch, we usually watch it with my wife. And guess what he put for him? A pornographic tape. <laughs> Imagine, we took a meeting, we took a Holy Ghost. Alafu nekeo na wife wako yuko mbali. Come on, be a wife. Are you kwapa me? See as you watch it. He was trying to look for a kind way to tell the pastor I can't. But that pastor was basically telling him, hii tunawachingi sa zile situ nasikia kuna kabaridi. Tunajiche mshanai. So it can tell you that there are certain people, even including men of God, that validate that if you're married, it's okay. I refuse for particular reasons. One of them being, what if your spouse is far? Who will you manifest those actions to? Because what you watch is spiritual. Everything that is in the world or everything that is done has a spiritual foundation. When people do music like Lingala, there's a shaking of the West. They are spirits they transfer. They say Michael Jackson. I don't know whether you guys may have heard of him. Anytime he did a concert, 200 virgins would break their virginity that night. Coffee or Lumi Day. Anytime he does an event, certain things have to happen. So don't be deceived. So when pornography, which is a live sexual orgy, is taking place, when they are taking place, it means there are spirits being transferred. And one of them are strong spiritual forces in terms of immorality, high levels, which can be completely uncontrolled. So what if your spouse is not there? That's the first thing. Number two, if now I'm talking of even people that are married. The second thing is if somebody who is married even who is watching that, at the end of the day, they would go ahead and have sex with their spouse. Is it having sex with their spouse really or the person they are watching? My belief is always a person because sex is mental. Am I making sense? Even those that are married here will tell you sex is first mental. It is, sex can never, that's why they are musicians who always know that whenever they play certain sexual music, it's supposed to appeal to your emotions but create a thought in your mind. To me, no Wana umeona watakwambia mwengi yangi tukitanda hivi alafu na giyuko na mambia nina feel. Iyo, ina, ina kuanga ngumu sana hiki kuanga hiyo na pinduke nina feel. Ina kuanga kulikuwa na kuchoche. Okay wacha tuseendele sana. So <laughs> ile nasema ni ya kwamba if they are for these people are finished watching this and the man is going to have sex with the wife. Guess who is actually having sex with? 
It's that person they watched, but they are manifesting it on their wives and vice versa. So my argument is that most single people and even married people begin therefore because of what they have watched without knowing what they have been watching all of a sudden impresses some image that brings in what we now call a spiritual husband and a spiritual wife. So that's another reason why some people end up beginning to struggle to have sexual dreams with particular individuals that are like, us, that, that, that are like spirit beings that appear. Me, I had a lady that came to my office this year and she was recommended to me. I've dealt a lot with those cases. And the lady told me there's always a particular man that comes to me. That's when I told her this thing as a root matter. We broke it. And she became free. But also what you are exposed to matters. Number three, spiritual wives and husbands also come because of territorial factors. We call them altars. If you move to a new house, you've never had strange dreams. And you never dedicated that house. You will discover that sometimes you have dreams which you never had. Or you go to a hotel, never prayed for that room. You will get all of a sudden that dreams. It means that there must have been an existence altar in that territory and a spirit being that has demands on anyone that is an occupant that's why principles like dedication are critical if you move to a new house dedicate the place if you go to a hotel pray over the place if you are a couple that is just starting marriage me I usually do premarital counsel a lot and I tell people one of the things by the time you're going to have your first sexual encounter because you're going to do it on a bed you have never slept on. And the Bible, Bible says the marriage bed should be kept undefiled. Which means a bed is an altar. When two people in marriage are having sex. Listen carefully. God is not embarrassed. He's proud. Mungu wa onangia kwa manjeri. Na njuguna. Wakigusana ama wakikulana. Na wameoana anambia malaika. Kila mtu fungia ni macho. Fungia ni macho. Apana. Anambia. Unaona vile mtoto wangu wako na power. Yeah, Jerry, no, 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 deliver. He's proud of them. Sex releases an aroma. Sex done in marriage literally is an act of worship. There's an aroma that is always released when two people in marriage have sex. In heaven, it's like worship. Are, are you hearing me? So, which means when it is done out of marriage, it releases an aura that is pungent. God is angry. Demonic spirits find room to act. So I usually tell couples, like for example, if Ken was to go and get married, or Ruth, or even our moderators, because I know they are single. If he was ever, I would always tell him, your best couple have to go and dedicate that bed, that yoni altar. Why yombe? That's why the couples were kwa kwa na argument. Uki wai taka kujua shetani na kutafuta. Kwa wale wameoa, iyo argument pali itata kuanga the most, ina kuanga kwa bedroom. Kwa sababu wapo ndo altar in wiko. So most of the times the devil attacking that marriage. Inanzan kwa bedroom, alafi inezenda kwa sitting room, lakini na kwa bedroom. Which means kama bedroom itachungwa, iyo argument ineza isha araka. Because hapo ndo alta iko. Am I making sense? So I was saying territories also facilitate these things that we have called spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. And let no one ever lie to you that they don't exist. They do. They do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, information is power. We are getting too much information. Yes, uh, I believe we have more questions, Mr. Patron. Yes, thank you. And uh, my questions are kuja kibao kabisa. So, uh, my, <laughs> my friend and my colleague here will answer yes. two questions. Thank you. As I give the panelists these others to answer. Okay, buenas I came to listen, I, I don't know, let me... No, we need a I was, I was here to listen. Uh, my question is um, from one of us. I want to get married and I feel ready, but my family is pushing me to study, to PhD first, then settle later. The, this issue has stressed me to the point I've thought of suicide. Now I'm thinking of eloping with the man and get married at the... DC's office. Is my question? <laughs> okay. My question is from one of us. I want to get married and I feel ready. But my family is prolonging. It's, it's pushing me to, to study to PhD first, then settle later. As in, the lady wants to get married, but the family are like, study first, have to PhD, then you can get married later. 
this has forced me to to the point I've thought of suicide. Kwa sababu ameambiwa asiolewe, anasikia afanye nini? Ajinyonge, si ndio? Um now I'm thinking of eloping with a man and get, and get married at kwa DC's office. Um I've tried praying but it's only getting worse. What do I do? I want to get married. I feel ready. I feel ready. Kwanza, the person who is writing to us this who really want to pray for you personally. Yeah. And that's, that's according to me because kitu yenye nakusukuma mpaka kwa kifo, mungu hayuko ndani. Bwana sifiwe. Where God leads, there is even, ata kama wende utakuwa umefikishwa ITC, there is that aspect of the spirit of the Lord giving you that peace so that you can handle a difficult situation. Are we together? So relationship yenye nakusukuma kwa kukufa, mungu hayuko ndani. Probably the parents are seeing more than you are not seeing. So in them pushing you to do a PhD, they are trying to help you to overcome what is coming ahead of you. So in as much as wazazi waneza kuwa wanakukazia, according to you right now, with your statement of kuelop, kwanza hiyo tuitoe, as Christians actually, it's not about kuenda kwa DC kupewa certificate, it's about being prayed for on the altar. So kuelo kuenda huko, ni kama tunaskumwa, the enemy is trying to push you, na ninaomba mungu watakusaidia macho, weze kusikia. Alafi hii umeandika, I've tried praying. We don't try prayer, we pray. Are we together? Please don't try prayer. Hii si mutiani ya tia kubatisha karatunda. Ndajwa karatunda? Iiii. Pingi pongi. Siyo, yu kitu ya kufanya ping pong. I don't know. Maisha siyo kitu ya kusema I have tried. When we say this is an institution that requires prayer, we mean pray. Please close your eyes and do what? And pray. Na ukisikia ti unasikia kujinyonga ju wazazi ya wakubali uoe. Pray more. Because ukijinyonga, haimanishu brother ataoa. Ataoa tu. Na niwendi utaku umefanya nini? Umekufa. So please, whoever this is, after spiritual counsel, and since tuko hapa, I'm here, I'm ready for this one. This one I think I'll help whoever it is. Mom, can I add on that please? Let me just add on that. Uh, I do believe that the person who is also asked a question is also having, uh, uh, you, anytime you're under pressure, you tend to be suicidal, according to my feeling. Yeah. So you need to deal with that character in your life. It seems as though whenever you're under pressure, the only thought you're thinking is to be suicidal. Marriage is never the end. So let's even assume the man is not giving you pressure, the marriage is not the issue. But I think you have a problem which you need to deal with. Otherwise, it seems like your constant reaction is, if under pressure, I want to commit suicide. So deal with that particular thing. It will disturb you. Then let me add on something because academically also most people usually have a struggle as it relates to that matter. Uh, uh, but just before I come to that, I think I would say that the way pastor has spoken, please if you can, see pastor immediately after this because you need a spiritual counsel to be able to give you guidance. But just to talk on academics, honestly speaking, most of times women, mom, maybe I could also, I will, I, will, I will answer and then give it like to you as a question, have had a problem because sometimes they feel like if they study to a certain level, most men may not quickly accept them. So that's something that also we may need to address. And then I usually have different views that sometimes it's never bad to bring in a suggestion that you can still do your PhD while in marriage, as long as you have been able to finish your master's. Unless it was your dream to first finish your PhD. Please remember, marriage decisions are not from your parents. They are personal. People buy into what you believe. So, like, if they are trying to tell you not to, they may have their own thoughts about it, which is good, and their own view concerning your future, which is also good, but it's also not bad for you to also give them a pathway so that they too can also buy into what you're thinking. All right, because uh, kuna vile unajua boro me unajua kama ikikuwa the first degree neza elewa, kwa even the second I could try and understand, but by experience most women have seen them struggle in when they rise in the academic ladder. Even many men that go ahead to marry them, very few are that mature and secure. I, I, I had a case where 
the lady had already finished her masters she did it even in the uk she used to be with us so by the time they were relating with the man the man was under pressure under pressure to go and do his masters because hey, Kwanona, we are tanikalia, we are tanikalia. and do you know what he did his masters but i knew it was in competition with the lady so sometimes i tell ladies um if you found a good man, you're rising in the academic ladder, your parents are coming in with what they are seeing as a vision, listen to their side, but also have your own vision that you could also convince them with, so that as you also relate with them what you are seeing, and that you want to do it, but you can also do it in marriage, and that means you can sponsor yourself, then it's not a bad affair. But to that person, there's some suicidal attribute in you. You need help. Please, see pastor, that will help you. God bless you so much. Amen. Wacha ni malizie, pia wana, when you're talking about a PhD, vijana to say diane, please marry what you can handle. Yes. Are we together? Uh -huh. Marry what you can uh -huh. handle, sindio? Sinimesema tu vizuri. Very well. Uh -huh. Marry what you can do what? You can eh, usiende ku, kuenda uko na unajua, kwa sababu hakuna hii mi, miti imetoka uko ikimea, sindio? Yeah. So si utoke na mtu mkuja vizuri. By that I mean there are so many aspects of handling. Kwa sababu inferiority kikuja in a marriage actually italeta shida. Mm. Na hiyo inferiority mostly nakuja wakati unaona moja wenu, especially men. Men have no problem if they are the one top. Yeah, but, but if, it's the, the if it's the lady who is the one top, haki ya wandugu hawezi manage yo kitu. So, mm. ukiona kama hamuta weza, tafadhali. But also there is a place where God makes a woman who can be so, so very high Extreme to be in a very, very good relationship with a man. So, siwezi kusema ati masomo inezazuia watu wasiwane, but ninajaribu kusema, kama we unajua ni ule ambayo, cheo ya msichana inakushtua. Tafadhali. Tafadhali. Kwa sababu tafadhali. <laughs> Sawa. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, hiyo kitu inafanya ndoa inafunjika. Kwa sababu sasa, men always want wakue top. Antaka akiwika, ye ndio jogoya, ya muji. Sindio, na hiyo ni kitu ya kawaida. So, ukijaribu kumuambia, mi ndio jogoya, chunge mayai, haiwezekani. Sawa. <laughs> Uh, this question, I'm 40 years, born again, I've been in church for long, girls come, get married, no one is proposing. Girls wanakuja tu, na wandugu mnaona hawa wenye wamekuja, na munyoni mi wa 40, kwa ni wandugu wa mkofea? Huh? Eh, fair before to give you so. Sinu kweli. Eh, kwa sababu mtu anapo fika umri wake wa kuolewa, this is a very straight question. Kwa sababu unaweza shangaa kwani mimi niko aje watu hawanioni. Na nikiambia huyu mtu patience Probably an Ezanyambia patience yake is running out. But I want to encourage that person to still be patient. God answers prayer. Are we together? Whoever it is, time yako haifanani ni awale wasichana walikuja wakaenda. Sindio? Time yako inakuja. I, I went for an engagement for a 50-year-old girl. Girl as in girl. Real, real girl. G-I-R-L. And the girl was a virgin at 50. So I, I took her. I took her for the engagement. Na, she was girly. She was girly. When I say she was girly, it means her kupote is a tribute yake ya kuwa a girl. Kwa sabu sa ingine ukifika 40, unawacha kuongelesha ukikuwa girly. Yu indi inizafanya sa ingine. Kwa sabu wanaume wanataka kikuongelesha wapate mali pa kuguza soft. Are we together? That's how you help me here. Yeah. Situko sawa. Na sengine mtu akiwa 40, anasema mini chuma ya zamani. Chuma ya zamani ezi olewa. Sawa. 
Are we together? So when when piga makofi, piga piga. So kuwa tu muschana because utakuwa attracted to mwana to to kijana sio kwa mtu mwenye sawa yeah so naweza kukuambia just be patient god is coming around usikwe na wivu na uchungu na wengine god has an open door for you shida ni kwamba mturuhusungu tu wa waunganishe lakini mkitusaidia kwa sababu mimi najota kuna wanaume hapa pastor akifika forty wajui kuchora mstari so inabidi tuwasaidie si ndio si shida yenu si ni kweli kwa sababu unataka tu mtu akunya nioe aya nioe haiwezi kuwa hivyo si so <laughs> lazima tusaidiane hizi mambo kwa sababu at 40 labda kuna vitu umepitia and they can harden you na inaweza funga njia zako so you can you can reach out na pia vile tu naongea hivi be a girl so that when a man reaches out you let the man find a girl sawa so that a part a girl not a 40 year old strong woman a part a girl men don't come back to 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 mawe they come back to a a ka sponge si wano men mwatete so yeah yeah well said well said thank you very much pastor damaris so i believe the panel nobody wants to add on that matter i want to quickly we get one question from the audience we get one question bring the mic this way before i give barak Bring the mic that way before I give Barak. Uh, Brandon. Yes, sir. I thought maybe we could answer those as we. I wanted talk. at least we get uh, uh, somebody to speak out. Then we come to the the ones who have written for us. Buenas noches, fiel. Amen. My name is Arahilka Amoit from Dominion Church. I have two questions. Yes. Okay. The first question goes to. I want to know the meaning. the difference between courtship and dating oh the second question goes to which is the right time to get married because i have a friend who is who, who, who got married at the age of 45 by the time alifika 60 years first born alikuwa anaingia university ama ndi anamaza university so at that time mzee alikuwa amechoka anafaa yani anafaa lishwe na watoto sasa so i just wanted to know the right time to get married is it 22 years or 45 at the age of 45 <laughs> thank so you very much acha tujibu tu ya haraka haraka kwa sababu tuko na mingi uh question number one, i think courtship is when two people have already consented that uh, what they are doing is moving into marriage dating is a process within the courtship it is a process of connecting getting to know each other that's what we call dating but courtship is simply it's already a decision when you're saying somebody is courting it means they are already in the process of going to get married a right age of getting married and the, the compared with the example that you've been able to give honestly speaking i think life's people's paths are different but uh, to suggest to people we would suggest to people if you would get married early at a particular stage in life as long as you've been able to uh, uh, fully mature yourself you're mature you understand your direction in life you have settled to some extent uh, go ahead and get married if you found somebody i hope i'm making sense yeah but like what we've just had as an experience of the person who uh, is 40 years there people would want to get married at a particular stage but life has it that they may not So that doesn't mean that you exactly cast and that actually by the end of today I think one of the things that we are going to do is most of even such a person sometimes that's where prayer has to come in so we will agree with certain people God will just open your gates supernaturally is that okay so that you can be able to shift but uh why I like the way pastor also Damaris has answered that aspect of the girl factor is genuine kwa sababu wenyewe kusema kweli kuna madada wanakauka mbaya pesa ni yao nini ni yao yani that, that's something so ina mpaka tinafanya kama unaume alikuwa anataka kusalamia sura tu peke yake inampatia suggestion apitie kona nyingine so that aspect of being gully sponge like honestly speaking have you ever seen kuna dada anaweza kuwaongura ongura unajua ongura ana sura mzuri mbonesa sifiwe lakini mandugu wamemfuata mbaya 
because quality ya moyo wake inavutia watu haraka sana response yake service yake inasaidia alafu wacha ni advice watu wa kanisa ni rahisi kupata kuolewa kuwa kwa hiki tunetonga service departments utaonwa mbio kini ukikuwa tu kamshirika tu pale hautaonwa ukikuwa kwa service departments people see you very very fast yeah uh, yeah thank you yeah, thank you very much uh, we get another question very fast and then those who are submitting the the papers make sure you submit them very fast so that when you come to the questions on the papers we are done with this thing so barak good evening 2 minutes okay good evening uh, mine is not a question uh, i'm just excited uh, <laughs> yeah the, the whole discussion is on fire it, it's it's a cool vibe yeah i'm enjoying myself um I had a testimony uh, about what Ruth said. Uh, it's personal though. Yeah, I'm a minister, I'm a, I'm a leader. So one day I sat in my prayer altar. So I my book. I kuandika the qualities of a woman I want yeah. myself. I wrote like 30 of 35. Hey. <laughs> every detail, every detail. You know, and, and, and I never, I actually I never wrote a prayer warrior or a, or a beautiful girl. I have some other things to look at a woman. So after I wrote, so I pre like Hezekiah, I told God, here are my, this is my request. For the first time, I had a rebuke from God himself. Yes. He told me, whatever you're asking is ready. Not even I am making her, she's there. But I can't risk giving you my daughter with who you are yourself. So me, myself, God can be a, chenyo meitisha baraki ko. Lakini like siezi risk kupatia msichana wangu utamwaribu. She's there. Bwana asifiwe. So the Holy Ghost influenced me to go back to you no know, building myself and you know establishing myself. So there's a day I said I'm not ready for marriage and someone confronted me. You must be stupid. I said from a standpoint where God himself rebuked me. You see that? Cuz whatever you're asking for is there. Aki au rembo wako. Lakini man Siezi yomba vajo na mii kazi ni kupita pita mtaani. Ni, ni, ni ukora. Sindio pasi. Eh, ni ukora. Bona sifio. Ya yeah, na siyata sikuwekea mungu maombi marefu at seven hours. Anaiza mfundisha maombi. But there are virtues, there is character. There is integrity. There is honor to their parents, to their, you know, to their churches, service, commitment. But short is even to the country. Imagine now adi umenya pendi Kenya. Na mii ni mwetu kusabu Kenya. No, ati mimi kila siku naenda US, mimi naenda naenda Russia, you know. Na mimi nimeitwa kukaa Eldoret Mailine. You see that. So God told me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it, it's it's a very interesting testimony. Mpaka nikapigia baba wangu simu nikamwambia mambo usiniombe tena. Niombe mambo ya ku build capacity yangu. Msichana ako mahali tu somewhere in this country. I'll find her when I'm completely built. That's my take, that's my testimony. Capacity, capacity, capacity in Tongo. Yes. Uh, very fast. Um, my name is Simfi. I have a question on depression, as that's our topic of the day. I was wondering, maybe we are here, and we don't know if we are depressed or fine, because I would like the panelist, any in particular, to kindly list down the signs and symptoms to know that you are depressed and how you can manage it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, that is what I had scribbled down, but now the people have spoken. So we are trying to, we'll start with Ruth. So we'll start with your questions, please. Okay, thank you. I'll begin with the questions I have, the written questions. Uh, before that, I want to add on well, the right time to get married. I'll ask a question. I'll just pose a question to everyone of us because literally I'm not married myself. Why are you getting married? If you can answer the question as to why you are getting married, time will not be a factor. Your age will not be a factor as long as you know why. Are you getting married for procreation? Are you getting married to have sex every night? Are you getting married, to, you know, are you getting married to be having someone you can call babe every morning? Thank you. Now, um, somebody wrote concerning love and uh, situationship. I want to believe. Yeah, I will just have it 
Um, I want to believe this is a very young person. Situationship cannot be in one sentence with love. Situationship. Okay, let me finish the, 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 the question. How do you act when, uh, when you have loved the one you re uh, love, then you realize she has a tattoo and you have attracted your like? Are you getting? One, I think love and situationship has nothing in common. A situationship is nila watoto. <laughs> Wala wa kuwach cartoon. If you are below 22 years, please, I ask you in the name of the Lord, watch cartoon Kwanza. I think, <laughs> I also think, Ruth, before you continue, uh, the aspect of situationship, I think this person was also trying to say, I've fallen in love with this lady, but then it happens, I found out something that maybe I did not expect. That is, I think, where the tattoo is coming from. So how do I handle this matter? Okay, I think how I understand situationship is whereby you, it is, a, it is not relationship, it is a stage where, it, it is a stage that comes before relationship. Now this one misused English. So. Oh, okay, thank you. How many languages have you done? Yes, that's why I said this could, this could be a young person. Yeah. That's how I understood. Yeah. In the language of Ijana Wadogo. But okay, nevertheless, um, let me just use a relationship. Let me yeah. replace it with yeah, a relationship. You're in a relationship and then something pops up and you did not expect it. Now for them, it is the tattoo. Okay, so the tattoo is what you realize you attracted your like. From the question. You loved, then you realize she has a tattoo yes. and you have attracted your like. I'm attracted to her, but she has a tattoo. So for me, maybe for the person... Uh, if this person has a tattoo, for me, I don't believe it is if it is right, according to them. So, so he, they're oh. like, is it, what do I do? So, I think the tattoo is the problem. Yes. So, you love her, but the tattoo is the problem. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, this English is hard then. Now, um, I'll still ask a question. Why did she or he put that tattoo? From the beginning, I understand tattoos had, had uh, ilikuwa na sababu. Wale wanyo alianzisha. It is an initial. It is a mark to communicate to your comrade that I am your, okay? I am part of you. At first. Uh, in the beginning, kitambo zile. Lakini badai, wengine tukona ni urembo, Okay? Tukaanza kuweka wote. Unaeka tuka butterfly, you, you feel like, yeah, hii kitu ni tamu, inaka mzuri kuiva t-shirt, yenye na, ni short sleeved, inaka poa. Ama skirt, ki, you know, you understand. And by the way, they look beautiful. So, I don't want us to judge this person kwa mba aliweka tattoo, unless atuambie kwa mba aliweka na sababu. Okay? Maybe mwingine tu aliweka, akijue ni urembo. Okay? That's my thinking. I wouldn't want us to judge this tattoo kwamba ilikuwa na deep meaning. Ama haikukua. Okay. The first thing is if you got related to the person and you started working with the person and you love the person, let's even leave the tattoo. You will always discover something different about the person you're connected to. That's what actually proves the relationship and whether your love is actually genuine. Uh, for example, you might find out somebody short-tempered as you get to relate with them. You might find out that somebody is really a spender in terms of finances. So let's even talk. Let's even make an assumption. Tattoo na kuspend pesa gani yata ni serious kabisa. Ni vizuri ku assess vitu flani. So if a tattoo can put you off, then you really don't love that person. I think you just should just walk out, leave the person alone. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Ruth, you can address the second question. Sometimes you want to confess... We, we want to confess that we have well, this English. I think you will have to go through it before yeah. I have to, to make sure I'm a talker Missouri. Sometimes you want to confess what we have but had and we are a Christian. We are Christians. I think that's what he's trying to say. Confessing 
is to expose, okay, that's what he anajaribu to explain, is to expose every wrong secret or evil deeds without shame or fear. Please help us, we come out of it. Well, this is a very nice question. Actually, on Thursday, Pastor, that was our int my intention, my deepest intention. That Pastor, um, as much as you're telling us to siende kulala uko inje, tulisha lala. Si tunangela sasa kitu tulisha fanyika. We have gone out there, we slept, we even have children. We are baby mamas, we are baby daddies. Sindio? Tukwa na watoto, ilisha happen. Hi, you, 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 this person, maybe she, she's 40 years. You realize she has been praying for her husband and she's really longing for her husband. You are 40. Sindio? The, 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 the situation is, you are in that condition. Sindio? So I want us, that, that was really, that was in my heart. We are depressed, we, we are sorry, we, 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 we regret, we have the regrets. So what do we do? Do to our children and hear life? We rebuild ourselves again. We re-identify who we are once again and move forward. Because if you, if you live with the past, your past will always determine your future. Not actually your future. It determines today. It determines the next minute. Your, the, tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow. Sawa, sawa. And that's what ent life entails. Pastor, this one will go to you. But I want, I, want, I want to bring this to your table. To our table, all of us. Tulisha mess up. Wewe ni mutu ukona watoto uko inje. Lakini wewe unaubiri. Ama uwe ni intercessor. Na haujai ambia mutu kwa amba, niliza mtoto nikiwa college, kama mwanaume, nilisha mto, niliza mtoto nikiwa ye, wherever, ni kuna watoto wili hivi. Na hawa watoto, their mothers, wana wako na my neck. Kila mtu wanataka upkeep. Na upkeep, unreasonable. So una, you realize the condition enye mtu wako ni mbaya sana. Mimi ni kona mtoto, personally I have a child. Mimi ni kona mtoto, lakini nilisha pona. I have a child. I have a child. I got my child when I was 15 years, by the way. Ilisha fanyika, sindio? Will I still live in that life? She's in form three, right now. I'm the father and I'm the mother. You realize ni taishingi kupiga simu, mtoto at pesa ya school fees itumwe, ndio mtoto afanya nini? Kusoma, sindio? Kama sijamua kudeal na hiyo, that thing that has already happened. You understand what I'm trying to say? Umetafta yo kazi for a very long time, baka you feel now, wacha tunifanya kazi ya hoteli, bora pesa nipe, but your heart is not there. But the, the, the prevailing circumstances, inafanya ufanya nini? Ufanya yo kazi. So you are not happy. And you are unhappy condition. In a letter, depression. Actually, I think I'm beginning to list now causes of depression. Depression number one, kituhuleta. Number one. And I'm sorry to say because it is really affecting each and every one of us in one way or another. Ni kama tu HIV. Vilo anasemange, you are either infected or affected. Inanza na stress. Na stress is when you do not meet the expectations. The expectations were not met. You were expected to be loved, nobody loved you back. You expected to have a job and have a good pay, you didn't. Stress. A st stress ni ile, ile condition, and it is not giving you, it, you are not easy. You are not easy. What you're saying is it's not giving you rest. And everyone, that's why I still ask dad to forgive us again. Allow us dad to be fools. Because dad, alisema, if stress is meant for fools. Is a school of fools. Dad allow us to be fools for now. We, we, we have stress. Unaitajika kulipa rent, hauna pesa. Unaitajika kufanya kupata boyfriend, miaka imesonga. The background inasema miaka yako, zirudi kukuja Christmas hapa bila, bila wife, bila mutu. So you wonder, who actually, whom are you marrying for actually? By the way, what una maringi for who? So pressure metoka kwa wazazi. Not even you. We unajaribu kumanage. Already, the problem that is already inside you. 
Hiyo ni problem uko nayo tayari. You feel uh, I will be turning 34 in the next two uh, mwezi wa sita. So 34 kwa mwanamke kwanza ujue miaka imesonga. Vile mnasemanga as men. So if Imagine, imagine now Allah, you are my patron. Unaona tu mwanadada ananifungia sana nafasi hapa. Tayari niko ndani yangu if I'm not true that I am that mimi inisumbuange vitu ama shumi mwenye anasumbuliwa ako na pressure ndani yake tayari. That person akiamka kila siku asubuhi ndani yake kuna vita. This battle. Anafika church, mothers tunaambiwa Get married, get married, get married. You wonder to who? <laughs> so ana tuongezea stress. Uh, Ruth, uh, kindly give us those uh, points uh, because time is moving fast, kindly. Yes, he stress ana kuongezea. Yeah, time is moving fast and you have very many questions so kindly break it down in a simpler way. Yes. Um my moderator Yes. The reason a story came up with depression was this. People are suffering. Mm -hmm. And I want people, it is my prayer that when we get out of this place, kila mtu wakua mepona. Kila mtu wakua mepona. Patron, you give me stress, niko na shida tayari ndani yangu. This goes, baka kwenye wanatusikia, this goes to pastors, this goes to our workplaces. This goes back to the roots where we came from. Christmas mtu karibishe. Wacha nae kutuuliza kama tumekuja na mtu. Let me now contribute because I, I see you will continue. <laughs> Just to break it down, there are social factors that can bring depression. Spiritual factors can also bring in, one of the things I've discovered is, for example, faith creates expectation. But if you read the Bible, the Bible always says faith with patience. So majority of the people go for faith, they forget to mingle it with patience. And anytime you have faith, you have built high expectations. But if you don't infuse it with patience, then it can easily create depression. Even faith can depress. So the spiritual factors also. Uh, there's also financial factors. In the current a uh, season we are in, there is a lot of financial pressure uh, right now. Whether you're talking of payment of bills, uh, expectation from parents, uh, school fees to be paid. So that can also end up creating high level uh, depression. There is also what we call expectation factors, which has to do with the visions, uh, dreams that you're having, careers that you also want to achieve. That can also uh, bring in a lot of pressure. Uh, Ruth also may mentioned something, and I think it's been a problem that I've discovered. Uh, even in our church, we've gone through the same. In fact, the, the message that has been ministered for the past two weeks, I've had one of the lady pastors we have, has been teaching on love. You know, sometimes when you come to church, you expect it to be the environment that should give you comfort. But apparently, sometimes you can arrive here, and you still find pressure. So, uh, what she's mentioned is actually very true, that pressure is hitting us uh, on all corners. So, uh, in simple sense, those are the factors. It can be social, it can be spiritual, it can be financial, uh, it can be career or life related. Uh, and then I also have to say there are also some people, they just have uh, background issues that have ended up developing root issues in them uh, that makes them just have an inclination to being depressed. Kituyote tu kidogo haezi handle pressure. Ata kidogo haezi in Amvunja too. So those are, are factors that I just wanted to mention just in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. On the same about depression, uh, I think as he has said, we have, we have different causes of depression. We have the social idea, the spiritual, like for example, church is so real. Sometimes I remember when I came to this church way back in around 2017, I was new. And I was new for almost three months. Because we are many, but nobody talks to you after church. Jipange. So I was coming. Then I was like, is this even church? You see, so if Ken struggled and I'm outgoing, then what if that person who cannot speak? You realize there'll be 
somehow either go away or stay there with their struggles. So church can also be a place of depression. Uh, and uh, not going into those because pastor has talked about them. I think one way to find, uh, to solve depression or to deal with it is learn to speak out. Learn to find help. That's why we talk about have someone you can talk to. Uh, on Thursday I was saying that uh, if you came from a place, from another town and you came to Eldoret, don't burn bridges. Have people you can always be accountable to. You can talk to them. I know some of us even have, 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 don't talk to our parents anymore because they're in town. So at the end of the day, it can happen. town. So one thing that happens is depression, number one is you have to talk it out. That's why we're having an, a real talk, an open talk. So you have to talk it out. And you talk it out to other people. So you have to be... Can, maybe let me add up something. There is part of a question when she asked, she asked about signs of depression. And uh, I think we have a lot of people that, because we've already gone into how to solve it. One of the signs of depression is the tendency to always isolate yourself. And uh, that's a killer by itself. Even when we deal with spiritual matters, if the enemy wants to finish you, he begins to give you a mindset of wanting to be isolated or feeling that people do not care. So one sign is isolation. Second is feelings of rejection and uh, perceptions. If one person, for example, hurt you, we were even discussing it in the office. If one person hurt you, you look at everyone like they are all the same with this one person. So feelings of rejection also come on you. Another sign that I've also seen with people that are depressed is they cannot handle themselves emotionally. They break very fast. Uh, another sign is uh, forgetfulness. If you discuss a matter uh, within a short span of time, they would even ask you, it's, it, it slips off. So Adam Tuan is a kwa church. Nawadi Gongwe, the person is aloof. Akotu. Atanangalia to Vitu to Zinapita. And they can they they have a lot of uh, they, there's a time I've, I'm almost about to forget their the emotions are up and down. What is the term? What is the term? The, huh? So they, 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 there is a term. The emotions are up and down. They, huh? Te, 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 they are temperamental. Eh? Yeah, but there is a certain term. There is a term I'm looking for. Huh? They are, yeah, let me just put it this way. They are, they are unstable emotionally. So you will find out they are laughing right now. They can be angry the next minute. So they keep on changing. They can, by the way, you'll be very amazed. There are even people who serve. Utaona kona asira na snap tu waraka sana na ikuwa praise and worship. Hata mbaka utakuja practice session watu wanapigana. <laughs> Being a pastor, I've seen things uh, that are very, very strange. So those are some of the signs that I could just simply mention. And then now we will go to uh, how to solve it as we continue. Yeah. Okay, can I add on stages of depression? It begins with expectations, then anxieties. Because you don't know what will happen. Yeah. Then it Anxiety goes attacks. I was looking for that also. Anxiety attacks. Continue. Thank you. And then it goes down to stress. And I want to echo this. A person who is depressed has no idea that is depressed. Yeah. A person who is depressed cannot tell you that I'm depressed. So it is the other person who will know that this person is depressed. Thank you. And they have low motivation. Low motivation. Yes. yes. Uh, so we can very much so we can proceed with the questions kindly okay uh we have a question someone is saying what if you you got a guy then akukatie in the same ukona mtoi then akwambie upeleke mtoi home ndio settle how would you handle that na hutaki mtoto waende akae home since umekuwa ukikaa na yeye wacha nijibu hiyo Mina elewa huyo jamaa. Awezi build marriage kama utakoa. Immediately ukioa ukikuwa na mtu mwingine hapo it's a bit difficult to build a marriage. So I think I tend to understand that the person is simply trying to ask for space so that the two of you could build. But the truth is also if that person genuinely loves you and has seen that you have been with a child all along and has built that child all along, it would be very unwise for him to immediately think of a way to get rid of the child. The first thing that that man, if he loves you, will do is to immediately find a way to secure the one that is closest to you. 
uh, I, I want to combine it with another question because it's similar, but this is different. But there's a way I will combine it. The person says here, my, my lady pays too much concern and she's too close to her spiritual father. Should I be worried? And then she continues, if I say yes, how should I handle this? The spiritual father is not yet married. Now, one of the things I've discovered, anytime you notice you are in a relationship, eh? <laughs> to, to the spiritual father, we are going to come about the marital part. But let me just generalize it in this order. If you're relating with a person who you notice has a very close proximity to somebody, whether it's a child, whether it's one of the parents, or whether it is a pastor, don't come in and create an enmity between the two of them. The moment you do so, you're already sowing a seed of strife in that relationship. The first thing you do is to so show appreciation to the relationship. Honor it. In the process, this person will notice that you are comfortable with it. Therefore, they will also be comfortable with you to an extent that anything they would want to discuss, they even won't discuss with the other person. You will be the first person they are talking to. But the moment they notice, because we were to mekuja, nafanya relationship two year, I mean, two months, three months, six months. Now you are mejuana na six years. Are you understanding me? Alafu nakuja wata kuisambaratisha. Siyezi kukudanganya. Every time you do so, you strengthen the person to go further from you. But when you give honor to that relationship, you make that person feel more comfortable to you and they would instead become more loyal to you more than even the other individual. So whether it's a, a spiritual father who's not yet married, that's not an issue whatsoever. As long as a spiritual father is a person who is mature and integrous. Okay. But if you notice that thing is hitting you too much, it means that you have insecurity issues. My advice would be deal with your insecurity. I hope I'm making sense. Now that adds up something else I needed to say. If you are in a relationship, and let's make an assumption, the person you're relating with is working in a place which, that's a lady, let's put it in form of a lady, where there are a lot of male factors and they genuinely have an interest also of the lady. My question would be, should you always be checking up on the lady? The answer is simple. You may not trust those men, but learn to trust the one you're relating with. Because men will always hunt the person. Even married women are pursued, my friend. They are pursued. Even vice versa, if you are actually related to a man who has an environment where there are very many ladies, most importantly, is trust the individual, not the people around the individual. If the individual has an issue, now we will address it differently. But if the individual is completely sound, sober, and clear about you, then be at peace. You will do well. I, I hope I'm making sense here. Yeah. So just to answer that in combination, you want to contribute? Maybe just to add on what Pastor is saying. Me wanna say my EV. I'm almost 30 years. If I get a lady size, a fire could answer kunibadilisha. Yeah. Nimeishi 30 years yes. si kidogo. Mm. So ukikuja waanza kusema oh unako unako waanza kunyoa hivi yeah. you know that is you you are not helping me you're controlling you are controlling me. Mm. So if you find such a person in a relationship murife. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me yes. just let me just echo that in a in a more psychological way. Human beings are social beings. There's this something that is that is that makes you fulfilled. Mm. If I don't, if I don't, I'm sorry to say this. Yeah. If I don't get it from you, I look it somewhere look yeah. for it somewhere. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Mm. Period. So probably you, whom you've written, I'm just assuming, probably you are, you've not understood this girl very well, and there's something that she really longs to get from you that you've not provided for her. Please find out and provide for her. She'll wow. come back peacefully. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Pastor, do you have the last question or we move? Yeah, I have. Then the other thing that I also wanted to say, please, ladies, never compare your man to your spiritual father. Don't give men that pressure. Amen. Because there are some men, they, that's why they are very insecure very insecure with what we consider as a spiritual father because your pressure what do you do with a lady who's born again but cannot submit she's financially stable but i am not advice ken watch it once in a way how do you advise what do you do with a lady 
who is born again but cannot submit. She's financially stable, but I am not. Uh, I think life is all about understanding each other. So if you are, uncon uh, you are not comfortable with someone being way higher, I think Pastor Damaris talked about it. If you see a lady and you cannot manage her, Jaribu to Jipange. Thank you. Yeah. But I have a different perspective about the same. This person began by saying she's, she's, she's uh, saved. Born again. born again. Are you born again? Number two question. She has money. He doesn't have the money. Let me just say the truth the way it is. I'm not trying to say that uh, being broke is a problem. But it is a condition. Watch that when you say my evil. <laughs> but what would, a humble, what would a broke man be if not to be humble? Second question. Second, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm not finished. Let, let me go to the next finish. part. Let her finish. Let her finish. Let me finish. Never, never, usiwai, usiwai, never be lied, never be deceived by a condition thinking it is humility. Mananielewa. Kuna mtu hana pesa, lakini ya kuna vision. You can almost tell where they are going. Hana pesa kwa sasa. Lakini akona pesa kwa moyo. Akona pesa hapa. All right. Sasa wacha mimi. Wacha mimi nituwa yangu. Kulingana na mimi, I tend to think this person is really comparing themselves with the lady. Yes. That's one. Secondly, I tend to think the person is also insecure. Uh, when you're relating, the first thing you look for, you don't look for submission. What are you looking for when you're relating? Honestly. When you're relating, the one thing that you want is friendship you want a company. You want somebody that you that can be your buddy. You can talk to. Not a person at we kuja hapa, kwenda uko. Majua. Then, another thing I also need to make as a statement to men, uh, I think it's important for you to redefine what submission is. Submission is not, if you get married to a person who will be running up and down, that person is not submitted to you. Okay? Even if they would give you your, their money, it doesn't exactly mean they're submitted to you. You know, there are people who are even deceived that a lady has to serve you as a sign of showing submission. There are ladies who may not exactly serve you, but they are really submitted to you. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying let's redefine the aspect of submission. Whoever asks this question, my thought would be, please, just take comfort with what is under your skin. Deal with yourself and agree I'm in a state. Uh, I'm struggling. The first question is, does this lady love me? If she loves you, then at least you have a starting from there. The moment you will deal with the fact that you are who you are and when you will just immediately become comfortable with yourself, you will notice that lady will respond. But if you compete with the lady, then she will show you who she is. Ladies respond to identity. When a man is secure, a woman immediately responds. When a man doesn't know who he is and is trying to discover it, most men do so by trying to discover it by manifesting it on women. Uh, that the truth is that he end on a shida. I hope I'm making sense. It's just like a leader. If a leader said I'm the leader and they repeat it always, that person is not the leader. They are not secure. A genuine leader will not need to say it. Their stand will show it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Now I see 15 hands, 15 papers. <laughs> I only have five minutes. <laughs> So uh, this is what I'm going to do uh, with my wisdom. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see the hands. I see the hands. Thank you very much. So uh, I'll give the patron. I believe he has some papers. But maybe, patron, before I allow you, there's somebody, Nimona Mkono, amekua kinifanyi vitangu. Ten minutes so there's this guy here with a gray shirt somewhere there. Just give him the microphone. Yes. And uh, I'm giving you uh, one minute. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Laban Keegan. And I have a question to the pastor. This one goes, uh, it's actually the final stage uh, of uh, Yakua Youth. And it's about, it's about uh, 
wedding. So, Pastor, is it possible or is it allowed for uh, is it allowed for us to have a very simple wedding? Because uh, I'm saying simple wedding in terms of uh, because uh, Ruth has talked about delay in marriage. Na hii delay na bring uh, inatokana na wedding. Mtu anafikiria ana pesa, amekuwa ready, hakuna hiyo pesa. Ana kazi. Na already amepata mtu. So wanaenda kwa coach for some time in a break up just because this man has nothing to offer. So is it possible for us to have a simple wedding in, in that um ile tu yenye inakuja inaandaliwe on Sunday mnamaliziwa because actually uh, I'm saying this because sometimes mtu uh, somebody may feel a certain age whereby I'm quite ready you or she has someone but she done you sir I think it's been clear yeah covid dili to say dear covid covid ilionesha unaweza fanya wedding hata mkikuwa wawili na pasi from that time people became comfortable hiki tu ya wedding usiwahi kuwa na pressure juu mtu mmoja ali set standard na wako kwa the same group lazima ufuate hakuna kitu kama hiyo kama unajijua na uko settled weka na fiance yako mkubaliane if you want it on a sunday talk to pastor come settle it here is that simple even to some extent as this church is growing to some certain level that's why some churches do mass weddings they do mass weddings to cut costs I, I hope I'm making sense. Yes, even to some level, sometimes you can even decide if the cell pastors are empowered. Uh, why should we even do it here? We can decide. The cell zone organizes, they coordinate everything. The wedding, the only thing we are doing is we as a core pastors come, we bless it. You are done. A couple did a wedding, we watched it on social media. So simplify. Now my dad has a lot of pressure. Wacha nisikwa kudanganye, ukiwai fanya ndugu apate comfort kwa relationship. Uyo ndugu ata make sure kwa ndoa, ata kupigania. One of the greatest example you people have is your bishop. Mm-hmm. Your reverend together with mama mpaka hii story, ilikuwa na itongaji ene bishop amubiri juwa wangari. Yeah. Aminu kisikia reverend akiongea, it's something that is quite humbling. But look at where they are today. Ndata na kumkani likuwa na watch your message. Mbaka I was joking with him. I said, makuna kitu siyez in Leah, my wife. So when, as ladies, don't allow society to give you pressure. And also I'm not saying, you know, by the way, there's good stress. And there's good pressure. Because some level of stress and some level of pressure also helps you to break out to some dimension. If you're too comfortable, you will never rise. So please make sure you settle down. Uh, as quick as you can hiyo ni kusimplify tu ni kujibu hiyo tu uh, inawezekana inawezekana uh, yeah. yes juni as you bring the mic the, there is this row wametaka kunimaliza so kindly bring it to this lady with spectacles praise jesus church Amen. Uh, my name is shali uh, there is this issue uh, burning issue uh, unapata okay it happened in some village Yeah. There was a couple they got married hata wakafanya wedding and then later on kumbe the boy was impotent but he knew it from the, from beginning, the beginning but he never told the girl mm. so because as christians we are not allowed to touch we are not allowed to kiss so nobody knew that this one had a problem so this issue now because now they are already married they cannot divorce as the bible says so this lady is forced to leave childless because the guy is dead uh, dead completely so i don't know how how we are going to be helped because now you can date or court with someone kumbe the guy has a problem but he cannot be open enough to tell you that i have this problem so there was a guy now who came up with some teachings and he was like uh, if you are in a courtship with someone that you guys you have to touch and know if the guy is alive or dead <laughs> you know let me ask you the so, dead you're talking about is it dead on performance or dead on getting children both oh my god yeah. <laughs> this is i think story. one yeah. she had already even mentioned it for she used the example mm-hmm. of uh, if a lady has a child and i'm feature i think one me have you finished and i was like now this guy, this lady is living under depression 
So we can she really divorce? Sawa. She, because now the problem if I was to have. if I was to meet them the way they were, there are only two ways. One, if they are submitted to spiritual authority, God can help them and show them mercy. Uh, two, there are also medical ways of helping such an individual, and they can end up recovering and also healing in terms of their sexual strength. And I'm not talking of Viagra. There are different other ways. So I think it's good to also, you know one challenge that we have is that rarely do people pursue medical attention when it comes to such matters. And I think if they do, they can really be helped. Uh, and then just to break it down, I, I do not agree in touching before marriage. Uh, I will establish a law and I want you to enter to those that are particularly virgins. Come on, you can have a new beginning. From there, it's different. But come on, Ujames, where we watch an equation. Virginity is an advantage and a big one for that matter. Even until today, there are billionaires on social media that pay good money to sleep with a virgin. They even have, when I tell you, easy vitus, and I told you, these are auctions. They auction <laughs> virgin. So just to show you how valuable, even in the spirit world, virginity is. So whether to a man or to a woman, if you have never slept around, my advice would be, please keep yourself as a virgin. Believe God that when you will get married, is the first time you will be able to have broken your virginity because like I said, one of the laws of virginity is the person that breaks your virginity is the one you become adapted and addicted to. So that means even if that person goes through bodily changes or several things, it's very difficult for you to become disloyal or unfaithful to them. You love who they are. That's the first body you touched. To those that have messed up, God restores virginity. By the way, you must know that. There was a particular lady who was a major prostitute in Nairobi. And the lady, after she got born again, she went before God and requested for restoration of virginity. And this restoration of virginity, because virginity is not just physical. There's also mental virginity. All right? There's also uh, 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 whatever, spiritual virginity. Virginity is in levels. So she requested the physical one. They call it what? The one that women have. He, he, yeah? he men. And God healed it. God literally restored it. Yes. God restored it. God restored. God restored. So it was her. She wanted it that way. She, she believed God for that. I, I hope I'm making sense. Yeah. It's not a mass. It's not a mass. It's not a mass. Mi kwangu most important ni mental kama ulivunja yako ya mwili. Deal na hii mental virginity yako. Amini amini Mungu ya kwamba hii rege. So that usikaende kuolewa na saa zile unaenda alafu tunakupata counseling session unasema huyu jamaa hajui kuperform pasta. Tunakuuliza kwa nini? Mimi namwambia hivi naona yeye hajui vile kugusa, hajui vile kufanya kwa kwani inamaanisha wewe sasa ulibeba hiyo yote unasahau huyu jamaa yeye alikuwa virgin kwa akili. Ndio unasema mkiona mkikuwa virgins mko na opportunity ya kudiscover nyinyi wa wili iyo yote mtu kwa pamoja sasa kukuja kwa kwako kitu ya kwanza ni ya kwamba it's encouraged to all believers that when you come into a relationship one of the most important thing is to sow a seed of honesty and sincerity it's a gift if you do in marriage you will never struggle insist on it now there are some things you may not open in the first month you open it with time but it's important you open two submit your relationship from the beginning to counsel because some things you may not say to them directly, you can say it to them while another person is there. It comforts. I dealt with a case of somebody, and not even one, not two. A guy was, in, imagine the day and a kupatiana dowry. Ame toka, toka eldoret, ame nakuru ampatiana dowry. Akarudi kama ame nda melala na msichana mungine. So taimoja na patandugo mefanya fasting ya 40 days. Unadhani ya jamako very spiritual. Ndo watu wengine wa kifasting mrefu. Oni suspects. Mi. Kuna pali nifika. So that's when the, a lady comes and tells me, Pastor, by the way, so and so, we've messed with him. Na kila mara nuanga ni hile tu. Sijia kwa mbia. Enda unanika juu. Nika muita, nika ambia ndugu. Ulikula. Haka ni ambia. Na huku na mkono. Na ambia hapa. Tunafaa kuongea. So I told him openly, your fiancé has to know this. There were only two months or three months to the wedding. And I beckoned the fiancé, sat her down, and I said, this guy has something to tell you. And the guy opened up immediately after that. That's why I always say, there is pastors are not small, small people as you would assume. There is a grace that they carry that literally brings reconciliation in matters that can never be solved, humanly speaking. That's how that condition was sorted, and they moved on. 
one which was even worse was a guy who impregnated a lady and the mother of the lady forced the guy to have to stay with this lady and this guy had a fiance by the time i'm being told by the time i'm sitting them down like this as we are discussing that's when the guy tells me i say bring the lady and we begin to talk i say how long have you been? three months then i ask the lady are you aware this guy's a fiance the lady says yes i ask the guy so are you ready to settle with this lady and the guy says pastor to be honest i know i made a mistake and then i ask the guy so do you love this lady now the current one he said me i don't i honestly know i made a mistake it's just because of this condition that we're staying together then i ask another question are you having sex and they said yes and i said lady na bado unaendelea kwa nango na jamaa na unajua kupendi akili yako ikopoa and the lady looked at me akashanga and we discussed and then i said we are going to the parents of the lady and i took the lady to the parents by the time we arrived like this i sat them down wale tatambaka waze ne kaambia listen if we force things we will destroy these two people the best we will do is let them be clear about what they want from there we will be that's how that guy was helped the lady was helped today as we are talking that guy married the fiance two years later after what i'm simply trying to say is sincerity is key but submission to counsel is very critical so something like even premarital classes are important now in big churches a sad thing is that you can be 50 of you cluster together and then you have no opportunity to have interaction so in such a church like i, I think in now i used to hear of it there were couples that people were referred to have opportunities to talk to them open up deep matters am i making sense within that position it will be able to help me those are the two ways i can really be able to bring out let me add on let me add this kama uko na shida ambayo sio wewe uliifanya uliikosa kama hiyo ya please talk it is not yani sio sio si dhambi sema sema niko na shida ya jicho moja haioni utasaidika because this person probably is suffering from low self esteem yes if you are impotent you suffer from low self esteem so you kila kitu ukiona ikiongelea hapo unasonga kando situsaidiwe tu yeah thank you na power ya mungu inafanya kazi mimi had a brother who had an accident his sexual organ was affected he was worried that he would never i prayed for him mungu alimsaidia anasimama vizuri sasa hivi ndugu ameoa ompata mtoto so mungu anaweza saidia thank you very much so uh what i want to do very fast i want uh, we are coming to the close of this i know i've not closed more than two times so i don't do that <laughs> <laughs> yes so uh, uh i'll like the panelists each to give a comment then uh, after the panel of give their final comment i'll go to the patron who will close this forum very fast i'll start with ken ruth then pastor will give us the closing remarks then i'll go to the patron then he'll close the whole forum okay thank you very much uh, brandon uh just in a conclusion i think it is very basic to understand that everything emanates from the spiritual aspect of our lives so no matter what you're trying to, we are trying to do let us always check on our spiritual life if we keep it well these things will fall in oh. place so if we check that all be fine wow. thank you like i said when we began it is okay not to be okay and you know you owe nobody an apology as to why you are not okay mm. secondly work <coughs> on yourself grow yourself mm. work on your emotions wow. manage your emotions so much that whatever you do to people you would expect back uh, in a good measure press down shaken together run over wow. thank you thank, thank you very much thank you so much I think mine would be very simple. Number one, uh be open. Learn to talk. When you have issues, please never shut down. Uh there are always people available to help you. Don't allow the enemy to deceive you that there is no one. There is always somebody ready to help you. Number two, seek counsel. If you want to do well socially and even to deal with the issues to do with depression, counsel is a very fundamental thing. So always have an environment where you can go to and become accountable to and also people that can speak to you and shape your way of thought and also 
become an environment that will secure you. Number three, I think I will echo what Ken said. The truth of the matter is that life is far spiritual. Any person that wins spiritually fast does well. I think we had Barak giving his own testimony about how God himself spoke to him. And you can imagine God told him what a psychologist had to study. So you can imagine you, if you relate with God well, it means there are things you may not even need to go to class. God will help you in that. I, I, I hope I'm making sense. When you pray, God delivers you from things. When you wait on God, God helps you. When you're connected to people, even in a church setup. You know, when I'm saying be spiritual, it doesn't just mean fasting, praying. It also means learning to connect with people that are spiritually mature. We talk of fellowships, in other words. Those things will be able to help you. And then one last one I think I should add. Read. Please read. Read, okay? Expose yourself to knowledge. Ata kama umeoa hapa, please endelea kusoma. Na kama ujaoa, Tafta Vitabu, Anza Kuji Educate Mapema. There's a book that was written that really helped us. It's called Kissing, Dating, Goodbye. Kissing, Dating, Goodbye. The second book that that guy wrote is called uh, Boy Meets Girl. I've forgotten his name. The first one is Kissing, Dating, Goodbye. The second one is Boy Meets Girl. And then now there's a third one. Though that guy ended up being affected years after he had gotten married, but that book really helped. The Kissing, Dating, Goodbye book helped a lot of young people uh, on the aspect of courtship, making decisions in terms of dealing with moral issues. Try and get that book. It will be able to help you. God bless you. Huh? Oh, yeah, it's called Joshua Harris. Joshua Harris. Boy meets girl. But start with the first one if in case you're single, Kissing, Dating, Goodbye. Even if you are in high school, just read that book. It will help you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Yeah. You can appreciate the panel. You can appreciate the panel. Yes, and now without further ado, I'd like to welcome the patron who will pick from there and will close the forum. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for the engagement we've had. And uh, it will be unfair for us to close out these questions. Eh? So what we've done with Pastor Damaris, we've uh, bundled them together and we'll try and respond to the few questions just here in in five five minutes at most. Huh? Uh, so uh, this one is asking a relationship where they are getting married, but uh, the parents have rejected because of uh, tribe. Eh? That is tribalism. Um, so I, I was I was once there, and uh, maybe this person can see me, so that to uh, idea. So I'm a lawyer married to a Kamba, and. Uh, we had a very hard time and I can be able to take you through. Sawa, sawa. And uh, Pastor, you had tackled that, I believe, as well. And then someone had asked, how will you heal from a broken relationship? Wow, and this was specific to Pastor Pancras. So I think... Uh, Let me try and maybe give three things or four things. Uh, number one, I think it's important for you to practice forgiveness. Be very quick to forgive. The first person that you should even forgive is yourself, first of all. Uh, sometimes people tend to throw the blame on the other person. You give them too much strength. Start with yourself. Uh, the second thing as it relates, when I'm talking about forgiveness, is yourself and the other individual. Because the quicker you release a person, uh, the quicker you get healed. Secondly, talk to a person. Look for somebody who you know is mature and intelligent enough in helping you walk through the healing process. It will also be able to help you. And then number three, have a vision in mind that can be able to make you make a decision to move on so that you sikakae kwa hiyo area for too long. The fact mtu alienda imanisha kwamba destiny yako imefungwa, ineza kuata destiny yako ndo inaanza. So watch aende kwa sababu mungu wa mekupangia kitu poa. So be optimistic, be positive in your thinking. Wow, thank you. And then my boyfriend has a female mentor. They are always together. Will our relationship succeed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. Because so, it actually shows that he has a lot of female, uh, feminine inclination. He will be more sensitive to you. Any man that is close to the mother will respond to you as a lady. Wow. Okay. As long as the mother is not controlling over him. Uh, so as long as uh, that mentor is not controlling uh, over that particular guy, it's quite okay be more sensitive if you can be comfortable with him around that lady you will notice that that uh, uh, female uh, nini mentor will now want to even be closer to you more than him yeah yes and then then, then to, just to add on that mentorship is on different levels eh? 
So there is mentorship on marriage, on finances, on yes. career. So depending again on which type of mentorship you are pursuing. Yeah? Yes, but if you are it's something different. Yeah. And then, uh, what do you do when a spiritual father says no to the person you love? Also, oh, I've heard this. <laughs> you've had this scenario where you see some two incompatible people. And unfortunately, we, by the grace of God, when you reach at some point, you can be able to, to see incompatibilities. Eh? Uh, there was a, some case I presented to dad and he said uh, that will die a natural death. <laughs> so <laughs> so when, when, it's a, when it's a mentor, if some, it's someone that you really accept and uh, know this is a person that stands in spiritually for you, then uh, when they say no, it's a no. When they say yes, it's a yes. Sendio. But it shouldn't be low. Yeah, it's, because it shouldn't be low. Because even spiritual fathers can miss it. Yes. But it is good to listen to what they are saying. They, they go beyond the no. Mm -hmm. Try and tap into something else. You know, by the way, even pastors have depression. <laughs> yes. So sometimes you can meet me at a point I'm disturbed. And you tell me something, I just tell you no out of anger. Maybe I'm going to wife. <laughs> so times ingine pia nyinyi mkwe discerning tukiwaambia hivi mtakuwa na grudge tuangalieni tunamnyamaze mtoke pole pole alafu mtukatie pole pole labda mkitupata kaa tumetulia tutawapatia more sobering answers <laughs> and then finally uh, you had asked about marriage eh? So like in this church, we have various options. If yeah. you want to get married, you can get married on Saturday here. You can get married uh, in a boardroom. You can get married uh, after our second service. How? You can get married at uh, mm. wherever, we, wherever we can get you married. Yeah. So <laughs> we give you all those options. Yeah. So we so, so go from as little as uh, 3,300, eh? that is for the certificate. Marriage certificate. You're done. Mm. Yes. So, Usi Ogope, you can see me for any other details about marriage. Yo, nitakusot. <laughs> so, let Pastor Damaris uh, respond to these other ones. <laughs> wow. Tumekwa na Ramzuri and I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Ameji Butiari, how to deal with depression from heartbreaks. People will be heartbroken in life. Mm. I was heartbroken before. Yes. The woman you see before you has been heartbroken bad. Mm. But look at me. Are you together? Look yeah. at me. <laughs> huh? See your theory? Practical. Kitu ili nisaidia ku heal from being heartbroken was to find who I am. Thank you. And what God has for me. Mm. So I... I realize that what God has for me is more than what is really breaking my heart here. Na nikaanza kufuata hiyo. Are we together? So, ukikuwa kwa relationship, usibari tu kichwa. Wacha tuseme ata relationship. In life, lazima uwe wewe. So, kuna mtu atakuja kwa maisha yako. Lakini we uwe wewe. Huyo mtu aneza kubreak roho yako, lazima uweze kuendelea. Na ata sikuwa heartbroken, maybe you can be married and after... Four years, your spouse dies. You don't kill yourself and die. Thank you you have a life. Mm. Sini ukweni. Wonderful. So heartbreak, itakuja. But you must find yourself. That's why I always talk to, uh, talk to wale wanataku olewa ya kwamba in the beginning, God. Mm. Foundation ikikuwa ukiwa heartbroken, you have a stability that will help you to stand. Thank you. Then you begin to move again. Sawa. So kama ujavunjwa moyo sikuingini, ukivunjwa moyo, Lia osha uso jipate. Kuchue uko na future. Na ufuate hiyo few. Future. The future is bright. What happened will always be where? Nyuma. Na kitu takusaidia araka ni kuforgive na kujipata. Are we together? Na usingoje moyo ivunjike into pieces. Soma red lights mapema. Anza kujitoa pole pole. Yeah. Ingine hata uneza soma red lights na usue na wezo wa kutoka. Sosa ingine uneza nyamaza mpaka ubunjwe kabisa. God has a way of restoring us. Are we together? <laughs> Situko sawa. Nikweli. Aje Ruth na mpendanga jwa nasemanga live live. Lakini wacha yeah. nikue pasta. <laughs> Sili ukweni? Yes, Kuna mambo ingine ya uchungu yaneza kukupata. Unajaribu kuomba itaisha na ikataya kuisha vile ulitaka. Badaya unajipata umeanguka kama sufuria, 
Pengerie. Ukisha nguka ile noise kisha, find yourself, pata the root, songa mbele. Wow. How we together? Sawa ya. There's a question here. Um, what do you do when you are proposing? Then the lady says, brother, be in the spirit. <laughs> So, so where was she? She was in the spirit. <laughs> you, you came in the flesh. Huh? Yeah. And you, you are solid in Christ. Unaona? Wewe unapropozia mtu anakwambia be in the spirit. Probably anakwambia uoni labda amechukuliwa anatarajia wewe ujue amechukuliwa na ujui. Ama anajaribu kuambia siko ready ama wewe si wangu. This could like, this Lakini mam pia like, madada wasikawishe manduku. Nidisha wambe ya kukawusha. Lakini dada kikwambia be in the spirit. Na tu ui spirit. Can you marry a spirit? No. <laughs> si tunawanga flesh. Eh, hey, sasa wu unakuja unamuambia mtu. Venye tuko mambo ya kiroo tuweke tu. Alafa nakuambia kuwa kiroo. Uh -uh. But mam, also I think uh, there is always, always, always a better way of answering such a person who has uh -huh. come up with a clear proposal. Nimekuja na roho yangu mzuri, nimekupenda. Nijibu tu, niambie kama umeenda. I think Ama this is a rude answer of a sister telling you no. This yeah. is a rude one. Oh. Oh. That's what I think. Yeah. They should learn also to answer. Yeah, there's a rude way, which is not correct. Yeah, thank you. Ukitumia <laughs> injia sana, Siku yenye utataka mtu akuwa in the flesh akwambie hiyo swali atakuwa so tafadhali kama umeokoka ongelesha wenzako vizu vizuri si ni sawa usiambie mtu be in the spirit that person is in the spirit si anaomba if a woman doesn't love you anakujibu venye anataka so that Which one is an indication bad. akupendi no ebu bwana sifiwe once we are talking here as people who are born again si ndio so tunajifunza kuongeleshana kama watu ambao wako katika roho, sivyo? So wakati unanijibu that strongly inamaanisha an aspect of you ni kama Mungu wajadil nayo. Yeah. There is an element of pride that kwani wewe uko kiroho? Ah ah. Mtu wako kiroho? Kiroho, si ndio? I have a girlfriend, I don't believe in gifts. Aki huyu dada si yako na shida. <laughs> Our gifts and celebrations are an important aspect in a relationship or marriage. Aki. Ukiwa tu na brother tu mwenye. Akupei kitu. Aki. Ata siku enye Abraham alituma wafanyikazi watafute bibi. So alitu, alienda na zawadi kabla waone. I think I should put it this way. <laughs> Let's even leave the gifts. Yeah. Love. The normal response of love is given. That's one. Number two, the normal response of love is to discern the other person's liking. We call it love language. If that person loves flowers, you pay the price for them because if they are happy, you find all the joy. And alafu unajua pia nice. mam ni naona pia huyu yeah. ndugu ana pressure perception yake labda ni anaona ati atasukumwa kutoa flowers unajua kuna madada by the way hawapendi flowers uh -huh. Yosi love language yao so we discover yake ni gani gifts and celebrations yes na ce it? celebration ina depend uh -huh. ina depend anasema i don't believe tunajaribu tu kumuelezea mm. these things are real yeah si ni ukweli life Hata ukichuna tu maua, unajua siku hizi ukitoka town, siku na maua pale chini. Na mwenye kaa uneza funga vzuri. Sio pia ni ya upendo. Ile kitu uneza fanyia mtu ya kumuonyesha na kupenda. Unajua kuna maneno ya kusema na kupenda. Lakini saingine kuna maali maneno inafika, haifiki. Sindio? Mstari haitoshi. So ile kitu una, unaitoa, inaonyesha mtu na kupenda. My, 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 my husband used to bring me sweet ya shilingi moja kukuanga na pesa but venya nakuja na ayo wala nakupatia you feel you feel that thing sinyo ya juu mwana ume kuinama street abai sweet akuja na ayo it's ikazraisi sawa 
So gift ni muhimu inaonyesha tu tuna relate vizuri, sawa? Aya, so two people are dating and have already engaged in sex, but they still want to pursue marriage. How do they embark back on a journey of purity and ensure that they stay so? This calls for counseling. Yeah. Confess your faults one to another. And in this case, I'm sending you to a spiritual authority. Wende umweleze. Tumekuwa hivi, tumekuwa hivi. Tunaomba to send. Nyinyi wawili wote. Yes. You go and say. Jameni sisi, wachungaji, in as much as Pastor Mbesema, we have a grace. Kuna mambo tunaambiwa, tutakufa nayo. Hatuta wai sema. Very true. Especially me, I carry people's secrets. And I'll die with them. That's why I'm your pastor. I'll die with them. So kuna vitu ukienda kama hii, this is very sensitive. Tutaongea na wewe, nyinyi wawili, na tuwasaidie, na tuwaombe. Alafu muanze hiyo relationship yenu mukisha ijua ya kwamba it's now a new beginning. Kwa sababu, I want to believe wakati mulikuwa pamoja, tuwezi sema hapo mulikuwa mmeokoka. So ni kama mkuje tuwa cancel, tuonge na nyinyi, tuwa okokeshe, you confess your faults, and then we are able to help you to begin again. To see me to do our two pay for Sababu, Sasa Mudisha in Gia Quadambi. Mom, can I also just add? Okay. Falling is not strange. You can fall. Mm -hmm. Even in a relationship of two people that are serious about God, may have had God, one of the pressures that you will have in a relationship is sexual pressure. Mm -hmm. So if you do fall, the quickest thing you do is just repent. Don't hold it. Just repent, see the authorities, and move on. So don't ever fear to confess your sins. Uh, we are not trying to set up a standard and say we are talking to people who are up here. No, we are human beings like you are. So being open basically sorts you out. Amen. So umesikia usikufe na iyo, tafadhali, kuja kwa pastor, the two of you, mkuje openly, ya kwamba imekuwa hivi, imekuwa hivi, but tunataka turudishe, ushirika wetu na mungu, na pia tuombewe pamoja, tuendele na Maisha yetu. Is mat masturbation allowed in marriage if the spouse agrees? Mwanaume uwe tu bibi. Alafu muambia masturbate. Sasa uliwa ya nini? Mm. Eh? Mm. Masturbation is a counterfeit of the devil. Anatumia hiyo kukufanya ufikiria kwamba you are sexually satisfied. It is wrong. This is wrong. Ati buwana yako wako huko, sasa anakupigia simu muneka kamera. This is that, that's the way that question is. Yeah. And munaweka kama video call. Mm. So here mezimama huko uchi na huko huko uchi. And then, please, please. Kama mtu wako anafanya kazi mbali, I think he distance muna kuwa mbali mukiongea pamoja. It's a good time of you cultivating when you meet together. Because the climax, the climax of sex is that point of that climax where you are lost in one another. Sio yo mambo ya camera, are we together? Come on, speak to me. Mbona mnakaka ni kana kumba mnafanya hivyo? Eh? Unagonga vizuri. Eh? Unagonga vizuri. Nagonga vizuri. Sasa we imagine tu ati mtu wako wako garisa hameweka screen hivi. Na we umeka screen upande hii hivi. No, the devil is Let a me liar. just add, masturbation is, 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 is addictive. Mm -hmm. When you begin it, breaking it is extremely difficult. Secondly, masturbation damages esteem. Yeah. Uh, men that masturbate never have confidence to propose because they always have this fear. By the way, to women, masturbation is worse. <laughs> if you're married or if you're single, and as a lady, I would advise you, afadhali monamume. Monamuke aki masturbate as a damaris, they struggle more than men. Mm -hmm. Because to a man, it's more of penetration. To a woman, it's a bit different. So, uh, your esteem is damaged. Number three, masturbation is self-worship. So, every time you do masturbation, in actual sense, it's an act of worshiping your own body, and it's, for, it's what we consider as idolatry. That, by itself, is sinful. So that's one reason why, again, you should not practice it. Fourthly, the aspect of what mom is explaining about the aspect of the camera, 
it's actually activating yourself more sexually. If you do that, you will actually, by the time you will finish, you will now be desiring to get to see somebody practically to manifest it. So you would rather desire to meet the two of you and finish it rather than, that's it for those that are married than this thing of the video call. Yeah, Vile Pastor Anasema, uh, I've counseled ladies who they have sex with their fingers. That's the kind of masturbation that Pastor is talking about. There are about. even machines that ladies buy. They are called vibrators. Yeah, but this one is like I use my fingers to arouse satisfy myself. myself. I arouse myself and I I satisfy myself, but at the end of the day, I feel empty, I feel wasted, I feel used. It's, it's replacing the original plan of God. In as much as you're feeling high, be careful of the environment that makes you go overboard. Sindio, be careful of that, be careful of that environment so that usiende mahali wakati ulenda kukulala and then you feel like you are alone and all those things. Especially kwa ladies, there are two weeks that are really very hard for ladies. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Si umuniongeleisha wasichana. Si ninasema ukweli. Kuna hizo siku nasikia kama unaweza kufanya kitu mba? Mbaya. Unaniangaliaje? He? He? Hapo ndiyo hiyo shida inafanya nini? Inatokea mana mwili inasikia mtu wakushike. Sivyo? Unasikia kama matiti zimeikata. Zimeinuka hivi kama asubui. Sawa. Alafu. Do you have a small baby here? Alafu. I'm safe. <laughs> mwili wako unakuwa vibaya. Hapo ndiyo ananiambia mom. These two weeks. They are really hard for me. I, I really have to use my fingers so but at the end of the day in anifanya after those two weeks my prayer life is down yes. my relationship with people is down my self-esteem is down nasikia kama nimetenda dhambi na itaji kuokokeshwa ukiona kitu kama hiyo mtu akikonfess hivyo it means that thing the enemy uses it as a strategy also to destroy your christian life so unona ni kitu si mzuri so that's why we are praying ya kwamba Mungu anapotuleta kanisani our men please let's reach to our girls and marry them to tusiwache waende hiyo njia and our girls also be approachable so that tusiingie kwa vitu kama hiyo si ndio be findable wakati unatafutwa be findable thank you let me please you want to say something because i want you to touch about breaking sexual struggle i will talk about that just briefly because it's important uh you can break the power of masturbation. You can overcome sexual lust. Uh, I will just give you a brief uh, portion of it. Just go ahead. Okay, before that, um, that's the, the, well, I'm assuming you're the highest, right? So, kunele tuneza manage wenyewe. Avoid kuka peke yako, number one. Number two, watcha kuwa idol. Number three, fanya mazoezi if you can. It is proven that if you sweat, if you sweat, if you sweat off, Nani atatuambia uh, kirwa watu wa gym uki sweat kuna vitu zingine zinakuondokea kabisa and trust me hiyo joto is part of it lakini kuna mama aliwahi niona alikuwa anatoka gym ndo amechemuka sasa hivi hiyo ni swali moja na mume wake husband ameenda kwa mke mwingine so how would you wow. such a person <laughs> after gym the lady is on a fire yeah? I think that one has a mental problem. I, I think no, 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 Kuna kitu mungu ameweka in a woman's body, ata kama amechoka, naturally there is that response, sindio? So kuna iyo wakati waku respond tu ya kwamba, ata kama umechoka, the body refuses to say no to, to what God originally put there. And then by the way, gyming, gyming with time, you, it gives you gas, it mm -hmm. doesn't take away from you. Mm -hmm. it, when you gym, you're supposed to get more gas, which means you have more energy mm -hmm. over time. The first time is no labda utakua fatigued. Mm -hmm. Lakini as you continue, your capacity increases. 
alafu mwili wako vinakuwa na elasticity nzuri ambayo ina, kupata, inakutana ina, na hizi vitu yes that's what i was yeah. saying so <laughs> Sasa, what I, what, why I can agree with her, the concept is not exactly the sweating and that. It's, it's supposed to act as a distraction to want, you, instead of going to release your energy in sex, you release your energy here. That's the, the principle behind it. Yeah. The problem is, Nikitu Mungu aliweka. Yeah. Tukubaliane. Kuna sata ukitoka gym, umejileta hivi, umejileta hivi. My friend, these things speak. Mm. Are we together? They speak. 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 When we are single, please, to see ende kujueka pia kwa iyo environment. Yeah, kwa sababu environment started. in as a trigger vitu zingine mi, mingi. Make yourself busy. Especially I'm advising us, wa, wa stand our cycle, those two weeks of the cycle, make yourself very busy. Make yourself very busy. Because siwezi kuombea iyo kitu ni keme. Iyo siwezi kukemea. Ni kitu enye mungu amewe, ameweka. So, Ni vizuri tu tutumie kwa njia mzuri na tu, tu let's keep our minds bit I think that's how I fight I, I've been alone for 14 years now Wow I've been alone for 14 years and uh, I thank God uh, kuna wandugu wanafanya hivi lakini wame realize hakuna mm. I don't respond because I've focused Set your mind. somewhere are we together I focus somewhere so, ukiwa na focus yako kwa mamba ambaya unafanya until God brings something your way itakusaidia. Sawa wasichana yangu. E, na wataka tu niende ni watoe envelope pole pole mi mwenyewe. Wow. Sawa. Okay. okay. Uh, suggestion to breaking sexual sin or struggles like masturbation. I'd start by picking up what Ruth and Pastor Damaris have said. The first thing is always avoid environments that will sexually trigger you. Do your best to avoid it. Proverbs chapter number 7 teaches of a young man. And the core reason why he actually messed up is simply because he walked by the house of the harlot. If he was not around that place, he would never have committed sin. So avoid environments that will trigger you. We are talking of programs that can trigger you, we are talking of a social media, whatever, anything that you know that will immediately stir you up sexually. Uh, number two, uh, my suggestion would be let your mind be set. I'm, a, I'm starting with what uh, the two of them have been able to mention. Set your mind on a certain journey. That's where Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 yesterday that I read came in. He says we should, there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, but are these screens working? There's a scripture I really wanted to show them. Are they working? Okay, can we get some scriptures? Okay, this one I was waiting for it. So just before we go, Romans 8 1 says that there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after. The walk there is in your mind and in your spirit. Your head is busy in spiritual things. Because if you are busy in that, you will easily die to the flesh. But I want to show you a scripture of a man that struggled with his body. Romans chapter 7. Let's read verse number 23 down to verses number 25. I want us to read the scriptures together. Are we ready? Okay, let's go. Want to go, but? Continue. Just stop there. How many of you always, when you, whether it's masturbate, whatever, you always feel like this? Yeah. Okay, whether it's a thought, whether it's a dream, this is what we usually feel. Now, who is writing? This is Paul. So, Paul also struggled. Yeah. So, if Paul the apostle struggled, then be encouraged. Yeah, be, encouraged. be encouraged. Paul struggled. He was a single person. And he actually, you know, there is a guy who goes to redeemed Christian church who ended up mutilating, he cut off his sexual organ. He said, this is a cause of my desires. Nakaitoa. There's a rap artist in America who 
uh, he was an R&B artist, but he was born again. So because he had a very good voice, he started being convinced to start singing R&B. And as he was being dragged into it, because he was doing sentimental music, uh, he all of a sudden started finding a lot of ladies around him, started messing up. Do you know he, caught, he cut off his eye? Because his, his salvation, your, your conviction, the enemy used it as a tool to condemn him. And let me say, God never condemns. God will never condemn you. There's only self-condemnation, people condemnation, and Satan's condemnation. Those are the only three people that can condemn you. You can condemn yourself, others can condemn you, and the devil can condemn you. But God will never condemn No matter what sin you commit, Mungu atawai kuinukia na asemea mikuchukia, if any has sinned, remember you have an advocate. So, ukitanadambi usitoroke kuwomba, enda ndo wombe. That's the time when God will give you more mercy. So, see you kama umenisikia. Hata kama umefanya saivi, hata kama umelala tu kitendo saivi, tafta tu vila utapigia tu magoti, as long as it is genuine. And tell God, honestly God, please, I ask you to forgive me. You will experience a love you have never sin because god knows you're human so paul felt the wretchedness go to the next verse look at the solution that paul had let's read it together one to go i so he agrees pastor damari said this body kuna vitu always yombea he agrees that his body will serve a law but he says the solution to my body is with my mind I will do what? It's there. With my mind I will do what? So I have a question for you. Does your body do what your mind does? Does your body do what your mind does? Does it respond to your mind? So which means the controller of your body is your mind. You only go where your mind told you to go. You only respond to what your mind told you to. You, you can't sexually desire a person if you never thought it. Ata dada kipita hapa uchi, lakini hau kwa ikuwa na yofikira. There is a way you won't run to them. Na sikuambia ti ukwena na ema useme nimekufa. Ati ya napita, ambia nimekufa, nimekufa. Ata, a, a, hapo utamalizika. Because your eyes are gates to your mind. So the point is, Paul suggested a solution. The solution he suggested is, as long as his mind is set on God, then his body, even if it is bound to sin, will serve God. I hope I'm making sense. So that's why I said, number two, it's essential that your mind is guarded. And to guard your mind, guard the gates that go to your mind. Guard what you see. Guard what you hear. Guard your navel. Always observe where you came from. Kama mitoko kwa familia, watu walikuwa natutabia, kukula na kulana, siwai idharao hiyo. Kama ulikuwa na background, guard your loins. Come on, look on a background. Ile uliwai mess. Never despise that. Let me break. I want to say something. Now, please, nataka tuichukwe positively. Ukienda kwa waluya. Alright? Uh, see all the luya zone. Utapata ya kwamba most men, hata baita mwanda kumari, utapata walikuanga na mtoto wakikuwa na vijana. It's as though it's just a part. Particularly around this area of Bongoma. If you go there, there. I'm not, uh, you, you're born again. I'm just saying, if you'll check it out, a majority of those men will always, the kunavile, tukusababu, culturally, there was this pressure from mothers that utanetea mtoto lini. So utapata kijana aliena tu nakames. It's very common. In the Kalenjin community, eh, they always believe that you cannot marry if you never had sex with a person. I said we talk. Sit on get a fadali. Yes. So you will find out in most other wale wa church, wa church, na wame okoka, na ata ni leaders, they are sexually active in advice. Ata kama wame enda counseling class, wate enda na wames. It's in the, I've dealt with this, so I understand. So we have to understand, we have laws ourselves as believers. Principles, spiritual laws. That's what we choose to subscribe to when our minds are given to it. Am I making sense here? So learn to study your background, then guard the gate of your mouth. Don't be sitting down with people that discuss filthy things. I can assure you, if your discourse has to do with ah, madam, ah, machali, mi hata naka, ukiwai kwa na iyo kitu, pole pole inaingia kwa sori yako. Over time, without you knowing, you are entrapped in the same culture. Are you understanding me? Third suggestion, fasting deals with your hormones powerfully. Fasting is a powerful tool 
whenever you feel sexually you can't handle yourself i'm telling you try fasting but that fasting must be full of the word and a mind that is set on god because fasting can also expose you to a sexual drive you have never had if you're not practicing it correctly unaweza maliza fasting even on atakam are you understanding me so that's why you have to do it correctly do it correctly make sure when you're practicing it your mind is governed in a certain way are you understanding me i hope you're understanding me your word unakula word so that your flesh is suppressed you will just notice your body begins to die to its urges any nation that has a lot of eating you will see a lot of immoral actions go to south africa they eat a lot so immorality levels are high i'm talking of immorality my own spiritual father is in south if you i mean one day he was joking with us you know he went to south africa in 1999 he was saying one day he was going to church in the evening at about six he used to be in a place called Clifton, which is in between a place called Eldorado Park and uh, Soweto. He says the level of sexual activity in that place is high. Alikuwa na pita time moja unapata vijana tu wanakulana tu hapo jioni. Nje. Na akatuambia aliwahubiria mpaka wanga anamwambia eh bana uko na neema bana. Uliubiri kama unaona pono live wewe uko na umekufa umekufa. So but what i'm bringing about fasting is powerful even in the bible to break sexual sin one time the tribe of benjamin had actually done something very bad and so when the rest of the nations were coming against them after god spoke to them you know this is after they messed up a woman who was a concubine of a levite you remember that story it's in judges so when the rest of the nations tried to the rest of the tribes tried to come they were beaten and yet God is the one that told them go and fight. It is until they decided to fast for 3 days that they were able to defeat it. What it meant is that that nation was ruled by a spirit that was fed by the I mean, by sexual immorality. Because of sexual actions, they had such a spiritual energy that no matter even if these ones were hearing from God, they did not have sufficient sacrifices to defeat these ones. So the solution was they had to fast. In fasting, they dealt with that cover and they were easy to defeat these other ones. Please, practice fasting and mark me if you do that, if, if I be a liar, appetites zako zina kwa control it helps even in your hormones lastly have accountability partners hiyo itakutetea for free kuwa na mandugu wale wako zilas hii ndio scripture sasa natakuwapatia nikimalizia second timothy chapter 2 na nyote mnaijua verse 22 lakini kuna pahali hamjui second timothy chapter 2 verse 22 tusome pamoja Aya, so hapo tu tukisimamia inamaanisha last ikitokea toka do this ni kweli kama unaona ndugu mmoja kila mara ukimwona unasikia mavitu zinainuka usijitie kiroho we potea i hope kuna amen hapo haya tuendelee kuna kitu natakuonesha but Yeah, so there are always certain people who are also really desiring to live a righteous life. They, they are passionate about doing You know me, when we were young, one day I was a, uh, a dean of students. We have a school of ministry back in Nairobi, back in the year, 19, the year 2000. I hosted Simon Bevy, he's a friend of mine, uh, for the men's meeting. I called it Moi, Men of Integrity. And when I brought him, he ministered to us. He challenged us. He made one statement that harassed some of us. He said, some of you must make a decision to die so much to the flesh to the extent that the first night of your wedding, you can even tell your wife then, she's no longer your fiancé, that we are not in a hurry. Let's just pray and sleep. We'll continue the sexual act tomorrow. Let me be honest, that is something no person would want to hear that is carnal. Isn't that so? Well, me pasi alisha semai, hiki to minta angusha. Me nita angusha, sinime patiwa okay. So what he was simply trying to say is that there is a way you can pursue righteousness. Sex is not the core thing you're thinking. And believe me, some of us did it. <laughs> we practiced. Because we would always sit with brothers who maungewe yangu na ken baraza ni kena na niambia e mi jana nilion, niliotandoto munga kaniongesha hii. Unakana mwengine, ruta na kuja na kuambia kwamba mi, malaika lintokea. Mwengine, the moment utakaibu, we mwenye utakaa wenze utafte testimony yako. Uombe mwambia mungu, give me my own encounter. So ati, si ati kena niambia, eh, kuna dem, kuna dem. 
let me be honest he says them that pursue so they are always people that really want to live a holy life connect to them i'm done god bless you thank you so much wow wow, wow. we thank god for this far and uh, i think we have to bring it to a close and uh can we look at the camera and uh, tell them <laughs> Wale auto camera. Wale auto camera. Tell them something. Simuambia kitu. Wow, so it has been a, a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow same time, same place. Bye bye. Yeah, so tomorrow we're meeting here at 2 again. For, we shall have um, a, a session on marriage so those that are will uh, those that are willing or <laughs> desire to